Welcome to the podcast from Temperance Town, the sexiest podcast of world renown. Tony grows a beard to hide his chin, swaps it with Earl, so it glistens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Download the pod, you won't get enough of these dapper chaps talking deadly fluff. In Hobo Gulch, they run a homeless mission, clanging and banging with a pentagram of kittens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. They enjoy their whiskey and local craft beer. By Odin's on Campubis, we give a cheer. Tommy's a raccoon when he's booziest. Don't be a savage, be an enthusiast. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. On the frozen tundra, they call it a lock. Tony likes to masturbate in a sock. Brian pisses rocks cause it feels so great I still don't know who the fuck is Tate Salty, salty language Kings of the sexy frontier The boys will let you know when there's a Due to male pattern baldness They don't wear curlers Stay salty people, that's their closing line And don't forget Have a beer, you'll be fine Salty, salty language Kings of the sexy frontier Salty, salty language Kings of the sexy frontier Salty Hey, enthusiasts, what's happening? This is Salty Language, episode 213. The legitimate word now awesome sauce of the podcast network. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> <laughs> Save that sound for the work creep stories. <laughs> 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 oh, man, I didn't even think about that when we were soliciting work creep stories from people. That's that true. It's time to bring Uncle Tony back. Uh, Uncle Tony's work creep story like, time. <laughs> dust it off. <laughs> oh, um, I prefer Uncle Creepy because it disassociates it with me. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Fair enough. Uncle Creepy. All right. Uncle Creepy. Oh, we creep. never did just come up with like a name for the guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he does need a, some sort of a name, but I don't know what the best creepy na- sounding name is. I don't know. You know? Other than like Chester because it rhymes with molester, but well, yeah, that's that's almost hackish though. That's what I'm saying. It's we're better yeah. than that, allegedly. Well, you know what? Well, I got a great idea. Hmm. I'm just going to Google creepy names. <laughs> Let's see here, it, it, creepy I'll, names. I'll bet you money that uh, most of the creepy names come from the South. Probably. Well, okay, this is just silly. It's, it's very top. Thank you, Google. By the it's way, it's going to be like Merle. the top link. Is from babycenter.com. Dark, <laughs> evil, and scary baby names. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't know this was a thing, Ryan. Uh, I could see where it could be a thing, you know. <clears throat> um, so you have stuff like Ash, Bates, Beast, Bones. Meh. These are these are boys' names. Right. Damien. Mm, that's, Gomez. Damien's hacky. Seriously, yeah. if you name your kid Damien because you think it's spooky, hack. Romero. All right, Romero is a little different because, you know. Spike. Oh, I watched Buffy too. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Those are boys' names. What if they're. Girl were... names is like Absinthe, Bella, of course. Ugh, yeah. Blair, Buffy, Carrie, Claudice, <laughs> Desdemona. Isn't he uh, one of the writers for uh, Graphic Novice on their website? I, I, he's the basis of gore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is uh, silly. This is not what I'm looking for. These are like spooky names. I was looking for like... Festus. Well, I mean, we could go <laughs> hack and just do Uncle Jared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty hack. You're right. It's pretty hack. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying, though. Is like the real creepy names to me have always been like the real rednecky names like Festus. You know, Festus, Festus, is, right. Festus just doesn't come across as a name of someone who's an upstanding, you know, uh, a distinguished gentleman, you know, like an a member, enthusiast a member. Member of society? Yeah, exactly. Well, thank God for rednecbabynames.com, Brian. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> my other home site. 
After saltylanguage.com, of course. Well, um, wow, there's actually a lot of redneck names. Right, Cletus. Cletus is here. See, here's the thing, though. Which is creepier to you, Cleet or Cletus? Because I think Cleet is creepier. It's what, it's what his friends call him. You know what it reminds me of? Do you remember years? Ooh, Floyd. That's a good one. Floyd's a good one. You're right. Do you, do you remember years ago, Jen got into a car accident with a guy named Clee Dangler? <laughs> do you no, remember I that? I don't remember uh, that, but all I don't right. know how I could forget it. Here's the sad part is I don't want to tell the story here because we're going to get into it somewhere down the road, you know, probably <laughs> okay, on enough. the crazy life or something. But yeah, the, the guy, she actually got into an accident with a guy and his name was Clee Dangler and I am not making that up. She that has like, the documentation or had it. <laughs> sounds like you need a penicillin shot if you have <laughs> right. <Klee> Dangler. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to figure out a good creepy name for her and I yeah. see if I can resurrect well, the here we go. persona of Uncle Blank. <laughs> Uncle Blank. <laughs> that actually <laughs> sounds like a horror character. Um a uh, way to catch up with the times, redneckbabynames.com. There's a baby holding a Confederate flag in their banner. Nice. That's classy. Good job, guys. That's classy right there. Classy. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's throw it out to the listeners. Oh. Is this our Q to W already? Nah, nah, nah. It's, oh, it's okay. an unofficial Q to W. Is this a... Uh, is this a... Crowdsource Arama? I got nothing. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, if you have a real, like, what's, <laughs> last time we asked for work creep story, so it's like, what What do you think is the creepiest name? Is there a name that makes you cringe when you hear it? I mean, aside from, you know, salty language. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. That's exactly. not really cringing, though. That's, you know, your nether meets, you know, uh, tingling and standing at attention. So Wait, it's standing at attention in a good way? <laughs> <laughs> eh, if your boner's still a boner. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it when Uncle came in. <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. N- name the creepy character of Salty Language. Name the mascot of Salty Language. Uh, if you I, don't know, I don't know about a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> we already have that clown thing that hangs out our car window yeah. still that we <laughs> have never really gotten rid of. No, I never did. It's Tiny Tim. Oh, I know. Yeah, as a clown because... I thought that there couldn't be much more terrifying things in the world than Tiny Tim as a clown. Although, exactly. I don't know. It depends on where you stand in the world. Clowns don't freak me out a whole lot. So Clowns don't freak me out either. Don't get me wrong. Every once in a while I see one and it's kind of weird, but eh. eh. You know. I'm just more disappointed by their waste of cream pies. Assholes. I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Not that kind of cream pie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uncles, anyway, <laughs> oh, that's a terrible gonna bury joke. my squeaky nose in it. <laughs> oh man, it's <laughs> the worst clown ever, right? Molesto the clown. <laughs> There's our name right there, Uncle Molesto. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Molesto <laughs> sounds he, like a magician, though. He sounds like a luchador. <laughs> <laughs> it's Senior Delicioso's uh, tag team partner. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Molesto. Senior Delicioso so would comes tag out. Team be called... <laughs> Woo. Would their tag team be called Molesto Delicioso? Yeah, obviously. That's also the finishing move name. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's where... Uh... <laughs> oh, he's got him in the turnbuckles. He's dead on the shit out of him. <laughs> Senior Delicioso gets you in like a uh, half Nelson, but he's like kissing your neck. <laughs> <laughs> and then Uncle Molesto comes in, and I I don't know does something foul. All but, bets are off. Yeah, yeah, it changes from match to match. Yeah. Oh man, and uh, then we we just need like you know Doctor Roxo to be the their manager, like their Captain Lou Albano, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. This is the yeah. greatest tag team ever. <laughs> Uncle Molesto just always looks like he's got a little heaviness in his wrestling trunks. <laughs> <laughs> just always a little little happier to, on everyone else to be out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. during tie-ups, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. He loves a rest hold, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, this is horrible. I'm writing down Uncle Molesto, because that might be the title of the show. Or 
What did you say? Molesto Delicioso? Or was it the yeah, other way? Yes, Molesto Delicioso. <laughs> <laughs> One of those two things is probably going to be the show title. <laughs> That's fair. It seems strong. Right. I agree. <laughs> Where the hell were we going with all this? I, I, we were trying to figure out a uh, you know an awful name. For our, and then it turned into an awful name for a clown. Oh, right, okay. And then, yeah, and then it was Uncle Molesto. Ah, <laughs> uh, yikes. Which I still kind of think sounds like a magician. but It kind of does, you're right. Yeah. yeah. It's like his magic word, Molesto. Right, <laughs> surprise, it made your inhibitions disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and memories. Yeah. <laughs> I won't cut you in half, but I'll tear you in half. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. moving on. That's awful. That's horrible. I didn't say it with the right voice. Anyway. No, 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 of course not. Ugh. So, uh, well, uh, welcome to Salty Language. <laughs> yeah, really. Yikes. If you're still listening, welcome. <laughs> yeah, right. Welcome to any new listeners. If uh, this is your first shot at the show, yeah, that's pretty much what we do. A lot of that. <laughs> no. We're terribly sorry. Yeah. Eh, not really. But stick with it, because it's like, it's like anything else. Like, you first start exercising, you're like, this sucks. But the more you do it, they're like, oh, this is getting great now. No, it always sucks. It's just you uh, start justifying it over time. Just power through it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like my dumb ass last night. <laughs> or a magic act with uh, uh, Uncle Molesto. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You just power just, through it and hopefully you, power through it. hopefully you don't remember it. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah, I saw your uh, late picture of, you know, that's been all the rage for me this week lately is I just wake up in the middle of the night. Awesome. I don't know why. I have, I don't know. I just wake up. Right. And then I just lay in bed and toss and turn. And today or last night, I'm just like, I'm going to get up and exercise. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or yeah. if nothing else, maybe you'll have, you know, a, a, a tired exercising accident and knock yourself out. You know? It may be. Either Kettle way. upside the forehead. Right. <laughs> You wake up and it's Saturday. Like, sweet weekend. <laughs> All right, sweet. It's the weekend. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's yeah. been shit. But, like, right now I feel like the walking dead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe I'll actually sleep. Probably not. From Probably not, not. Not if you have my luck with sleep. You you certainly won't sleep at all. But I mean, I've, I've like, done no coffee except for my morning cup. It's been nothing but water. Yeah, but you keister your morning cup of coffee, so. Yeah, so well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> you dip the tape on in it, and yeah, yeah, exactly. I use one of those, uh, you know, things that Neil wants to buy, the old oh, alien right. sex toy thing. <laughs> right. I was like a back bike tire. Uh... Except I don't, I don't put the uh, the alien Jello egg in there. It's just a you know curry K cup. <laughs> <laughs> the K stands for Keister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keurig will never be the same again. <laughs> Give me some more of those Keister cups. Oh, oh my God. What's going to be great is if down the road they introduce bigger ones. <laughs> oh, they have them. Have they? Because <laughs> there's a new one that you can brew a pot of coffee and it has oh, these okay. big, huge pods. <laughs> well, you ke- start small. Keisters. Just like with, you know, uh, butt plugs, you guys start small and work your way up, you know? Yeah, well, it's true. Exactly. Well, for most people. Some people. I mean, unless you're hardcore. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You wake up from the old uh, Uncle Molesto magic show. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's like, wow, Plus you're up like to a double XL. <laughs> Plus you like to enjoy your keistered coffee with a side of tears. <laughs> Which, who doesn't? I mean, that's... <laughs> right. Oh, man. Ooh. Damn it, Uncle Molesto. I'm, Uncle Molesto might just win. Like, I, I just don't know that that's going to be... It also... Do you know what else it feels like? Is it feels like a late night horror show. Yeah, kind of like Elvira. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Molesto. What was that? What was that one? Hour. I just said round of Rousey's up all night. I'd watch that. <laughs> Me too. But I'd be Ronda terrified. Shooters up all night. Yeah, man, I'd be terrified though. Um, I can't think uh, of well, that one. Front, well, yeah. there was yeah. the one that had like a doctor or something named to it. I think that was uh, one of those. And there's like a really famous one, and I can't remember it. I, I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember it either. Yeah, it was like Shock Theater or something like that. Or Yeah. I don't remember. Moving yeah, I have Google right here. It's crazy. Eh, it's all that work, though. Yeah, but I've been... I, I Fine. Googled all kinds of dumb shit. Right. <laughs> it was Uncle Melissa. I was like, oh, my That'd God. That'd be hilarious. Hmm. No, I don't know if it would. Well, Shock Theater is definitely a thing. Yeah. Hmm. I feel, there was, like, a really famous, like, host that... A lot of people like 
you know, from forever ago, but I can't think of the damn character name of the guy. Horror host. There you go. There's a separate link. Ooh. Silly. Um, Dr. Demento. Yeah, Vampira. It's not like Dr. No. Demento, is it? No, nah, he had a radio show. Okay. Elvira. Oh, that's a terrible name. What? The current show is called Cinema Insomnia, which is every day this week for probably both of us, <laughs> with host Mr. Lobo. That's terrible. Mr. Lobo? Unless Mr. it's Lobo. unless we're talking about the DC Comics Lobo, I'm not interested. Well, in the 60s, there was a host that was called Deadly Earnest. <laughs> that's kind of strong. Dr. Creep, Dr. Madblood, Dr. Shock. Those Dr. Don't, Paul Bearer, those are some doctors. Those don't seem right. No. It wasn't looking Dr. Forward, Dr. Love. Green, Gang Green, Dr. Terror. It wasn't Dr. Feelgood either, Neil, so stop yelling it at the. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Yow! Um, yeah, I, I got I, nothing, I, man. I don't know. All right, fair enough. We'll move. I, damn yeah. it. It really bugs me because it was a really famous guy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a, a horror host. In the 2010s, and her name is Sharon Needles. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. I can respect it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Although we don't encourage that kind of behavior. Now, in the 50s, you had Marvin. In the 2010s, you have Sharon Needles. <laughs> That's an upgrade. Uh, we're doomed. Doomed. <laughs> doomed. Yes. Doomed. So how was your week, man? Uh... Pff- well, it was gonna—I was gonna say fairly non-eventful, but then, no. Um, so I have a stupid story and an appearance that I made. Which do you want me to well, talk about first? Uh, whatever. I, you know, they're I was, all. I was gonna give you. We'll the get choice. to them all eventually. All right, fine. Um, so Monday, I uh, jumped on uh, our pal Clint of Geek Dig and uh, sometime semi-permanent uh, Green Up fame. Um. I, ju- I jumped on his uh, Jedi Council show. Did what- you get a robe? No. What the fuck? I already had one. Woo! Oh, nice. <laughs> I was the only Jedi in a Ric Flair robe. <laughs> oh, my God. Ric Flair is a Jedi. That is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I was styling and profiling. Anyway, we're not going to get into all that again. However, uh, but yeah, it was a good time. Jumped on. We talked uh, video games, and uh, we talked various movies, and uh, I don't remember what the hell else we talked about. But it was a good time. Oh, TV nice. shows and stuff, yeah. Right? So, yeah. There's something fun about being a guest on a podcast, because you don't have to worry about all this shit. Yeah, yeah. You just sit down and talk, and it's kind of nice. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Although, you know, it, it, it's kind of tough sometimes when you jump in like that because of it being a... a kind of a forum or a, a round table, if you will. Right. Um, Point counterpoint. Yeah. That you're, you know, you, you, everybody has to get out of each other's way. Otherwise it can get, you know, uh, it can just become a mess uh, audio wise. And I, it didn't feel like it at all. Like the whole time we all, cause we're all podcasters. We've all done it before. So we all kind of got out of each other's way. And if you did step on someone's toes a little bit, usually it was, Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. And then we go back to, you know, Right, the other stuff. So it, it worked out pretty well. It was, it was a good time, you know. Plus, I, I've never actually talked to any of the guys on that podcast except for Clint. <laughs> Clint, right? Yeah, like Roy from yeah. Moving the Needle. I've had various interaction with on Twitter, but I've never actually talked to him. You know, so although I will say I, you know, made it well known that I'd like to be on Moving the Needle at some point. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Just because you know, <laughs> I'm trying to become more of a podcast whore myself. Um, That's Megan's territory. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't mean that way. I mean, I don't oh, want to okay. be like a podcast groupie. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good time though. Uh, I I don't know when that's going to drop. I haven't talked to Clint yet, but uh, when it does, we'll you know we'll, we'll uh, plug the shit out of uh, it. Pff, you know it. Much like Uncle Molesto. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Um, the other thing was. So I got one of my prescriptions filled the other day. So I'm at, right. the, I'm at the store, and two things happened. One was that I posted a, a tweet that has caught on a little bit, and apparently I can write for, like, teenage girls or whatever because they're the ones liking it. Um, I saw somebody. I saw somebody that was in line, and they made the comment that their hair – or that they had just got their hair did, and it, would, it looked awful. 
And I'm just in my head, I'm going more like you got your hair didn't, right? And that was my tweet. It's pretty strong. Is more, and, but it, what, you know, it's, have you ever tweeted something and you're like, this has to have been done before? Yes, yeah. I can't. It's so obvious it has to be done. Yeah, I searched Twitter, I searched on Google, and I can't find anything. So if someone points out to me that it was done before, obviously I'll take it down as per last week's conversation. Right. But as of now, I, you know, it just, it feels so obvious, you know? Like, it's like somebody had to have done this. But anyway... But most of the likes for it seem to be, like, really young girls, which is making me very uncomfortable. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally if I get a follower and I look at their account and I see that they're, like, really young, I seriously, I block them. Because it just right. makes me feel like a creep. So, uh, anyway, that so that's, that's story one. Story two from the store is I'm in, I get up to the counter and I'm like, you know, picking up my prescription. The guy goes, cool. He's like, does your insurance usually pay for this? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, it's telling me it won't. And it's and I'm like, I don't like that answer, you know, so much. I'm telling you, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. I just swipe it and run. Um, <laughs> well, and it stings, too, because it's not – it's a, the medicine I take for my, my gout. So – and right. I had already been without it for a week, so I, I, I needed to get back on it. Were you with gout? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. God. <laughs> I felt dirty. Uh, speaking of flares, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so he's like, "Well, let me look into it for a minute." He goes back and he checks, and he, I, I just see him kind of laugh, and then he comes back to the counter and he goes, "Okay." He's like, "So here's what's going on." And he shows me, you know, those bottles that like multivitamins come in that are like there's like a billion of them in in the yeah. bottle. So it's one of those size bottles, right? And he shows me this, you know, it says allopurinol all on it and the dosage and everything. And he goes, now look at this one. And it's like a normal prescription size bottle, right? He uh-huh. holds, he goes, your insurance will pay, won't pay for the pills if they come out of the big bottle, but they will if they come from the small bottle. He's like, you'll notice it's the same manufacturer, same medicine, same dosage. Now, you that know, doesn't even make any sense. I'm assuming they scan you know, the bottle when they take pills out of it, you know, for inventory sake and such. I would think so, yeah. And, um, you know, for the DEA and what have you. I don't, or whatever it is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that was the thing was whoever filled the prescription took them out of the big bottle, not the small bottle. So basically, since they're the same thing, they're just going to, you know, they, they just rectified it by, you know, canceling it and scanning, you know, the right bottle. And I'm like, that's so ridiculous. But it reminds me of before, once before one of my medicines, I had to get, I had whatever it was I was taking was like 200 milligrams once a day, right? Right. My insurance would not cover the 200 milligram pill, but it would cover the 100 milligram pill. So they gave me the 100 milligram pill and I had to take it twice a day. You had to take it twice. Right. right. <laughs> and I was like, it's the same, uh, whatever, but... And the you know the guy working the pharmacy he's like yeah he's like we have to deal with this crap all the time and I'm like I'm sorry because that's beyond stupid and I bet your job would be a whole bunch easier if garbage like this didn't exist and he's like yep <laughs> yeah it seems pretty dumb you think it'd be way more streamlined yeah because instead of me just walking up going you know prescription pickup for me and they just here you go and I walk out the door basically it took ten minutes for him to get it all sorted out. I don't know right. how many times a day they have to do this, but, you know. Probably more than you realize. Right. and I, Just dumb shit like that. Now, I don't know the other side of it. Like, when they go to fill a prescription, I don't know if it, like, uh, has, like, a printout that says, hey, this is what his insurance will pay for. I don't know if that, or if they have to look that up later or, but either way, it's just, yuck. Right. It seems ridiculous. <laughs> just ridiculous. For sure. <sighs> So, yeah, there's that. So, how about you? You got anything else for the week, or I think? Yeah, well, we went uh, over the weekend. We went out to the went to, went up to the cottage, which was nice. It was quite nice, right? And uh, we went to uh, Dark Horse Brewing on Saturday. Oh yeah, right, right. Which was awesome. You know, it's funny the, your pictures of that place because they have beer steins hanging all over the place, right? Everywhere. Yeah. It. it I wonder, the picture made me feel a little claustrophobic. 
It's pretty big in there. Is it? And they have okay. a big beer garden outside. And, okay. Because just yeah, that whole, like, feeling like, you know, like, it's bad enough in a pla- some of the places, but, like, ha- having feeling like stuff is all around you kind of, you know. Well, it's it's their mug club, which I'm going to talk about. Right. Because it's awesome what they do. It's a $60 buy-in, right? Uh-huh. And the local high school makes the mugs once a year. That's cool. So all the mugs are different. Right. Well, when yeah, you buy, I mean, <laughs> you get a number, and, and they put the, your. Well, sometimes they put your name on the bottom. Yeah. Because the reason I asked the bartenders, I'm looking around. There's a bunch of mugs that just had numbers, no names. So I was like, oh, maybe they're vacant. Yeah. Because if if it was vacant, I probably would have bought in because it's not that far from the cottage. Right. You know, especially because yeah. there's a blue mug that just said the judge on it in all these cool colors. I'm like, that's a cool <laughs> mug. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> So, nice. yeah, so I'm asking, I'm like, are these ones with numbers? Are they vacant? He's like, oh, no, 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 no. All, every mug, if it's hanging up, so, it's someone's mug. Wow. I was like, huh. That, and like, some of them looking lot. at, were, were, like, the numbers wow. were like 1,700 something. Wow. So they got a lot of mugs in there. Yeah. And that guy's like, but uh, I can't remember exactly what day he said. He's like, uh, September, whatever, we're doing a, uh, we're, we're adding 200 mugs. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. And the guy's like, yeah, um, uh, you want to show up at midnight, and uh, we start giving them out at seven in the morning. Jeez, because people show up that oh, I don't early to camp out and wait. Given because for those who don't know, uh, Dark Horse was uh, the brewery that was featured on. Um, oh, I can't remember what the show was called. It was, I think it was just called Dark Horse Country or something. Yeah, like that. It, but they had a TV show where it showed kind of the ins and outs a little bit of like their day to day stuff for their festival that they do there, where they do special releases like around Christmas at the brewery. And the line was ridiculous for it. And, yeah, and that was bef- and that was filmed before people really knew. before people really knew. Well, yeah. I mean, before the yeah. public really knew. Right, but people n- know beer in Michigan know about them. Right, but now they're they're known probably in various parts of the country that they weren't known about. You know, so right. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm not and, really surprised, but at the same time, it always blows your mind that people will stand what seven hours. For, yeah, you know that's just crazy to me. And like I said, if if the, I could just buy one, then I probably would have. Yeah. But I'm not. It's not that. I mean, and it's a lifetime. You know, you're once you buy in, you're in. Oh, okay. That explains why they have so many. Then, okay. Yeah. Because I was wondering. I'm like, wow, that's a lot. And I was like, well, yeah. I'm sure they get a lot of people coming. But it was like, that still seems like a lot of mugs for, uh, <laughs> right. for you know, a yearly thing. But a but lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Once cool. you're in, you're in for life, and yeah. it's like. It's more than a pint. Right. But it costs the same as a pint. Okay. That's fair. You know? Right. And I think it gives discounts on, like, kegs and stuff like that. Right. You know? Now, here, here's a question for you. Yeah. Because I worked as an art uh, assistant in high school. Like, okay. You know, like, during my homeroom, you know, I'd go down and I'd help. So I used to help them in the ceramics area, you know, get stuff and move stuff around and whatnot. Right. Not every level of student is the same in the ceramics classes. So how do they keep the level of mugs from not getting that one that looks like it was some kid who I don't know punched his there, there must his, be like a, a a certain criteria it has to meet maybe. Yeah, I would Cuz all so. the mugs looked I mean they all look pretty pretty nice. Okay. And like I said every mug was different, which uh, is, that's what kind of made it cool. Unless maybe the mugs are made by like the teachers or something like that, kind of a, you know or overseen I, by the teachers and then just decorated by the students kind of a thing. Yeah, I I really don't know. Fair enough. I was just curious cuz I was trying to figure out how to word that without coming across like I, yeah, without sound like a dick. <laughs> yeah, cuz I don't want to be like, "Hey, what about the slow kid over, you know, I yeah, don't want to exactly. be like that." Yeah, so but that's kind of the question I was asking because, like I said, I've seen some really awful ceramic stuff. You know? Yes. But yeah, it was it was awesome, and the, the food was killer. All the beer we had was go great, figure, right? Yeah, because their beer is pretty good. The only reason we don't talk about their beer on the enthusiast a lot is because the line is generally it's always ridiculous. Packed. They're yeah. always one of the longest lines at these beer fests we go to. And first of all, I mean, they have good beer, so it's deserved. But it's also well, because they're they put famous. on a spectacle. Yeah. Oh man, do they? Yeah. Did, yeah. We, did we post a picture from, or did I anybody get remember. a picture? I was going to say if so, we should have thrown one up. Um, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, their their display at that last beer fest we went to was incredible. It was it's easily pretty impressive. It was easily the most impressive one. Like there yeah. were some others that had cool stuff, but theirs was easily the most like over the top of all of them. But it yeah, makes sense, sure. you know. That's that's kind of who the guys are and stuff, which is cool. It's just you know, 
Like you said, that oh, wine yeah. was nuts. Hey, we had a great time. Jeannie may have had a little much, but as is tradition. <laughs> as is tradition, right? But, uh, you know, yeah, it was awesome. The like, so beer was all good. All, the staff, everyone we talked to was awesome. Cool, yeah. You know, we ended up meeting a dude. Uh, this guy came in. He had a growler, which I've never seen before. So, I, of course, I'm like, you know, I've been buying them up lately. Yeah. And, of course, I bought a Dark Horse growler. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had I asked him, like, where where did you get that growler from? Because it was like a swing top one, like our Granite City ones. Yeah. Right? But it, the long neck then went into the body. It just looked like a barrel. Oh, okay. It was cool. And he's like, right. oh, man, I used to live in Canton, Ohio. Uh, I bought this at uh, the Cleveland uh, Farmer's Market. There, It was two bucks for it. Oh, geez. For the glass. I was like, he's like, I had to buy it. Right. I was like, oh, yeah. So, we, you know, we just started bullshitting. Turns out he's a brewer for Gonzo Brewing. Mm, okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And and he's like, you know, we're getting ready to leave. He's like, man, I wish you guys were hanging. You guys are real fun. I wish you were hanging out. I was like, well, you gonna be at Detroit Beer Fest, dude? It's like, oh yeah. I was like, it's like, oh, look me up. My name's Rob Gonzo Brewing. But he's like, if you're ever in Kalamazoo, let me know. I'll show you around the place. Show oh. you ins and outs of the brewery. Brewery. Challenge accepted, sir. I was like, wow, that's exactly. <laughs> I, I, I was like, made a note on my phone, so I remembered him. You know? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, unlike the guy who we sat and talked, you sat and talked with at Mommy Bay Brewing, that was part of the beer fest. Uh, group. Yeah, like like organized the beer fest we go to didn't get and any I contact info for the guy showed me showed me pictures of his like Frankenstein lab of brewery yeah. or beer in his garage right. and I completely forgot anything about it which fit that weekend though because we totally just showed our ineptitude that whole day yeah just, we shut the bed that weekend yeah, we were so unprepared for everything yeah. so yeah that's yeah awesome. it was uh it was a good clean fun at Dark Horse but you know we I, I was I was fine Jeannie was hammered <laughs> right Dri- we're, we drive back. And, uh, you know, she crashes. I'm, I'm kind of waiting. And then, you know, everyone was out on the boat. It was just us back in the place, which is kind of nice because we kind of needed that. Yeah. But here comes the boat with all the kids and all these people we don't know because, you know, there's always people up there. Yeah. And Chuck's like, oh, hey, uh, I need you to come with me. I'm all right. Like, He's like, oh, we got to go grocery shopping. Is that a milk run? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I kind of figured it was in, in the same vein as a milk run. So yeah, so oh, we ended boy. up going to the pub and having more beer, and <laughs> we we did buy groceries. Oh well, okay. Now by you groceries, know. you don't mean like you know you bought some Slim Jims, a uh, TV guy, <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, like legit groceries. Okay. But you know, one of my stepdad's uh, friends owns a bar right outside of Monroe, uh-huh. and uh, that you know that root, the uh, not your father's root beer I've been bitching about. Yes. Yeah. That stuff sells like hotcakes. It sells like hotcakes everywhere. Yeah, and you yeah. can't find it anywhere. They sell it out there. So he's like, he gave, he's like, hey, pick me up like six cases of it. Wow. All right. Yeah. So we that we bought that and yeah, because I actually when I was in the store the other day, I forgot. I didn't. I don't remember the the company that makes it, but there was another one that they had a big display of, and I'm like, that's they clearly because that's all the rage right now. And going back to our conversation about that, when you were like, man, it's just too sweet for me. Right. I have read since that talk we had, uh, I have read various posts on Instagram or Twitter where people post a picture of it and they show and they're like, oh, there's no like beer taste and blah. I'm like, that's what it is. It's for yeah. people who like sweet. I and like don't... tasting the beer and the alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's it, weird as that sounds. That's what it's for, though. So. I was like, but so, so we got a bunch of that and I started getting texts like because, uh, you know, we we're picking up stuff for dinner, too. Yeah. I'm getting texts from Jeannie. She's like, so, you know, uh, the girl's fired up. And I'm like, all right. So I told Chuck because we're sitting there drinking beers. I'm like, I'm like, I guess they're firing up the grill. He's like, all right, we'll go grocery shopping. We start grocery shopping. And then, uh, you know, he's like, well, let her, let, let them know we're on our way. So I, you know, I text Jeannie again. I'm like, hey, we're on our way. And she, she's like, I don't care. It's Chuck's brother was like pushing everything along. Oh, okay. so, Chuck, so Chuck's just like, wow. Ah. Fuck him, and we went to the other bar. Had more <laughs> <beers>. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it, it was actually nice because there's not often I can just go. It's just him and I. Yeah, that go out. You know, usually it's a, him. It's a group. So right. that was kind of cool to just have him and I, and we could bullshit. Right. It's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. But I just love that. Ah, well, fuck him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty strong. <laughs> but but the other bar we went to, they had better stuff on draft, which, you know, I, I saw it because Green Bush and our Michigan brewery, you know, the 32 flavors of ice cream brewery. Right, right. Brewery. I thought that was uh, Arbor Brewing. Mm, uh, well, maybe you're right. Yeah, I think you're right, but I think that was Arbor. Okay. Ah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But so I'm asking the bartender, and this woman was, 
I mean, I could get more better answers out of my glass of water. <laughs> That's I'm a smart like, glass so is that a is that a green bush tap handle I'm spying over there? And she's like, huh? Oh, is that the one of the GB? I'm like, yeah, probably. I'm like, do you know what beer's in there? She's like, I don't know. It's dark. Oh, how are you? Okay. I, I, yeah, I'm like, I guess I'll have that. And then, you know, like like Chuck's beer of choice is Heineken. So he's like, hey, I'll take a green guy. Right. So she's digging through the cooler. And right now, Heineken's doing all those things that their bottles have cities on it, you know, like it's kind of like Coke and like, give this to whatever. It's oh. like, hey, this this is the Honolulu bottle or whatever. Okay. And she keeps looking at the bottles with cities on it and putting them back. And then she looks at me and she's like, is this what he wants? I'm confused by the city. I want to take a pool cue upside her head. Oh, my God. Like wow. like Roadhouse style. Oh, obviously. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, that. Uh, if you're a bartender, you've got to at least be somewhat knowledgeable. I, I absolutely hate when, not so much when we've, because most of the places we go are pretty well They, they know their shit. But I've been to enough bars that, you know, you go in and you ask for something. Like, oh, what do you have on tap? And they're like, uh, uh you know. And, and most of the time, you know, they can rattle off the easy ones, but it's like whatever. But it's like, oh, like, you know, wh- here's a great example. We went into Rockies, and I was all, had already uh, – I had two-fisted uh, those uh, – uh, God, I can't think. Bel Air Browns. That, right. You know, and I wanted to keep going with the brown ale. You know, yeah. So I was like, "Do you have any brown ale?" And the guy was like, "Uh, you know, uh, Justin was his name." And he's like, "Uh, and he's like, I think we do." He's like, "Hold on, once he walks over, he's like, not on tap." So I was like, "Okay," but then he came over with I don't remember the name of what I was drinking that night, but the bottle of the brown ale. He's like, "This good?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll try it," and it was tasty, so I kept drinking them. You know, I mean, he right. didn't know a hundred percent, but at least he wasn't like at least he was aware of what a brown ale yeah, was. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I probably would have, like, do you have a brown ale? She'd be like, it's dark. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And I, and again, you know, I'm not knocking Rockies at all. Cause I, you know, I, like you said, it's like, he didn't, he wasn't, you know, like he, he knew what a brown ale was at least. Yeah, exactly. He didn't look at me. Cause I have had that since drinking brown ales where I've asked a place, do you have any brown ales? And they go, what's a brown ale? And I'm like, do you have Newcastle? Because if they don't have Newcastle, they're probably not going to have. It's just you can almost tell just right then. If I ask if you have a brown ale, and they're like, "What's a brown ale?" Like, do you have Newcastle? Because it's probably the most famous brown ale. Yeah, you know. And they're like, "No, never heard." I actually had somebody say, "I've never heard of Newcastle." I was like, "You never heard of it?" Like, wow. Like, okay. Just dive out that window, would you? Do a header into a bumper, just right out. But yeah. you know, that's just us being, uh, you know. Our snobbish selves, I guess, a bit. Well, it's what we do, Brian. Because <laughs> I, I hate going into a place and it's like, man, I want a beer. And you're like, what do you have on tap? And they're like, you know, run-of-the-mill American beers that are, you know. Right. And uh, I'm like, well, what do you have in a bottle? Because usually they'll have Sam Adams. Like on yeah. tap or in a bottle and nothing else, I'll drink a Sam Adams, you know. And the one place I went to, I didn't even have Sam Adams. I think not, not even in a bottle. They didn't have Sam Adams. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what place I'm in right now. It's pretty much I'm drinking Budweiser. Or I'm not drinking. Yeah, or I'm having water. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it's like this is clearly the beer of choice here. And you know, I, there's you know, I don't blame them. If I had a bar and I sold mostly Budweiser, I wouldn't necessarily stock everything under the sun either. But you know, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Indeed. Yeah. So yeah. But uh, <coughs> uh, crap. But then, you know, took yesterday off. It's originally when you're supposed to take the kids to Cedar Point, doing our Wednesday, like, rendezvous thingy. Yeah. But it ended up just not happening because the kids' cousins were in it in town, so they've been at, like, the in-laws the past two nights, which is kind of nice because no rugrats run around. Right. Although, yeah, I miss little fuckers at the same time. Stop lying. Yeah. <laughs> but we had to register Logan for dun-dun-dun high school. Right. Which means... Which is mine... Oh, well... Because it's yeah. mind boggling to you, yeah. Yeah, it was. Good call, Macho. Good call. Oh, uh, it was weird. Registering the kid for high school. Right, but the way to look at that is that only means that means four more years till he's out the door. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've said that before actually. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> but uh, you know, so that was kinda nice because we registered him and then yeah. we like went to breakfast, which is which was nice because you know, as a family we don't get to go. So like well we sure. went to Grumpy's downtown. I, I'm going local here. Sorry, guys. Yeah. It's only open Monday through Friday. Right. So which, I don't get to go that often. Right. You know? Yep. 
But it was one of those weird days yesterday where we're like, we ended up eating out all day, which is a horrible idea. And also not really what you guys do unless you're on vacation of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because like our friend Renee met us for breakfast and then we went and dropped the kids off because the kids are going to go see a movie with their grandparents. We took them to one of those stupid outdoor malls that tries to pretend it's a town. Oh, right. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we dropped him off out there and we like hung out at Starbucks and had a coffee and just bullshitted for a little bit. And then I get an email and it's like, oh, here's this sweet coupon for Granite City. It's like $10 off a $30 purchase plus the first beer is a dollar. Nice. And we're like within walking distance of Granite City. I'm like, hey, guys, look at this. And Gene's like, you want to do lunch? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, because, you know, 10 off of 30 is pretty strong. Yeah. And, you know, so we had, be- had some beers yeah. and some good food and then. Right. We end up coming home and we're like, oh, we got to go pick up some like produce, but they have a farmer's market, you know? Yeah. Uh, down over in the middle of the city. So we're like, yeah, we go down. We're doing our farmer's market thing. And Gene's like, I want to make this cheesecake based off this cocktail I had a couple weeks ago. Right. I'm like, well, what's the cocktail? She's like, it's a jalapeno cucumber. That's an interesting idea for a cheesecake. Yeah. She wants it. I had the cocktail. It's good because that leads us to dinner. Okay. Because she's like, you know what? Why don't we just go there and you can try the cocktail? Well, okay, so oh, yeah, twist going. my arm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, find the things I do. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up going. It was at Revolution Grill. Nice. We ended up going there Which is and sitting awesome. at the bar. I Because I, I know Michelle drives right by there on her way home, so I texted her. And I'm like, hey, want a cocktail? She's like, ah, I'm still at work. I was like, eh, like, happy and? hour. You should just leave. Right. And she did. Because <laughs> we, we peer pressured her, both Jeannie and I. Nice. So she we ended up hanging out her to like nine something at night. And I was yeah, it was just good. It was like it was, yesterday was a good day. Nice, nice and relaxing. And then right. back to this shit today. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice, nice and relaxing until I woke up at you know one thirty. Right, right. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. But yeah. dude, you know Revolution. It's if it, guess people don't know, it's like a gastro pub. Yeah, they're they're you know? they're all farm to table there, aren't they? It's all it's farm to table, okay. and they it's they got a new chef, but and... she's pretty cool because we said because they have the bar and then they have the chef's bar. We can watch them cook. Right. That's where we like to sit. Right, and it's just, it's just entertaining. They're like seasonal too, aren't they? Like the yeah, menu they, yep. changes constant, like day to day. The menu can be different at the place. Yeah, because like, their menu's on the iPads. So yeah. once they're out of something, it just <laughs> well, vanishes. as we found out when we were there that one time, remember you wanted yes. what was it, the ravioli yeah. or whatever, and they were and it disappeared from the menu. <laughs> But uh, they always infuse, like, bourbons and whiskeys for whatever season they're coming up to. Mm-hmm. So they just pulled out this batch. They weren't making drinks yet, but they let us try it because we were bullshit with the bartender. Weird. And it was uh, it it's a Michigan like- Cherry Tobacco Bourbon. Interesting. And it is delicious. Now, how much tobacco taste was there to it's, it? It's like you, you take, you, you drink it, and it's yeah. like, well, it's that punch of the bourbon. Right. Like, with the, just the alcohol punch. Yeah. But then it's like cherries and then it's tobacco at the end. Okay. It's really good. Because I know some of the beers we've tried where they're infused with the tobacco, some of them are really overpowering, and others yeah. are, you know, it, it's, it seems like something that's tough to get a good subtle taste. But I'm assuming with the bourbon, it's probably supposed to be kind of like the smoky after note of a bourbon. That's exactly what okay. it was. Yeah. It was, it was really good. Awesome. And I'm like, I need this in an old fashioned. And she never made it for me, which was fine. Cause if I would have had that, I would have been hammered. <laughs> Cause I, I was on the verge. Right. You know, and yeah. then I, and then I dropped off and got to like baseline. Right. But if I would have had an old fashioned, I would have been, it would have been a problem. Yeah. 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 I don't see why. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it was, yeah, it was, Sounds it was, it was awesome, though. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. what I liked about that place the couple times I've been there. It's, I it's love always, that they, yeah, they infuse all yeah. their own stuff. It's great. Yeah, I love looking over that liquor menu. I don't necessarily indulge in it because it's not always the uh, cheapest of things to indulge in. Cause, right. You know, I mean, the place uh, is a li- it's a, not really pricey, but it's a little pricey. I mean, the, honestly, at the, their happy hour is awesome. I was just going to say that, they're, yeah. Their house cocktails, which are like ten, eleven dollar cocktails normally, are yeah. half off. Right, and, and that's, then all yeah. the appetizers and flatbreads are all half off. Right, so it's like that's not it's not bad it's, when you yeah, get there for fun. happy hour. Right, like Michelle showed up and it was I think she had five minutes of happy hour left. It's like give me four old fashions. That's kind of, yeah. She's like I'll take this cocktail and can I get this one as well? <laughs> I've done and the that guy's before. Like yeah, but I'll I'll have them make it for you later. But I'll put it right. in now. Yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I did that. I don't remember where I did I did that with beer one time. I'm like, can I order, like, four beers right now? And 
And they were like, I'll put him in now, but I'll bring him to you as, we'll as out later. And I'm like, awesome. Well, I was getting dra- yeah. uh, drafts, too, you know, so you don't – I don't want my – you know, dra- I like a nice cold draft. I'm not a warm beer guy, so. Right, right, right. But, you know, hey, when they're as cheap as they were, because they were, like, half off and, you know, I'm applying them to my face, you know, as quick as I can. But sometimes, you know, you need a minute. Well, sometimes you want to you want to sit back and enjoy the beer. Savor it. Well, yeah, savor it. That is one thing I will certainly say about the drinking of the micro brews and the uh, craft beers and stuff is you certainly want to savor them more because if nothing else, you'll go broke otherwise. Yeah, because I, mean, yeah, I just like they taste yeah. so good. But I mean, or some no, of them are so high alcohol content they'll, too. they'll just punch you right in the oh, face. Seriously. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, some of them at like seven bucks a pint. You know, how many of those well, can you yeah. drink without? You know, you're like, eh, you know. Versus Dude, you if you're drinking like Budweiser, beer pond of Chill Wave. Oh God, no! You'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we never did, you know. Or you know, like when I was in those drinking days, we always used cheap beer because, first of all, you don't want to go broke on it. You also didn't want to die from, you know, yeah, alcohol from chugging poisoning. it. Although it was funny because most of the time what was used was like Natty Light, and it was like this is nothing. Can we at least upgrade it to? Something that's not a light beer. And, yeah, like mm, maybe just Natty. Yeah. <laughs> mm, frowny natty faces. Natty unleaded. Yeah. Frowny faces abounded from everyone. That's why I always had side beers. I, You know, yeah. at the time I was drinking Budweiser's and I'm knocking Bud's back on the side while we're, <laughs> we're drinking the Natty Light playing the game. It's like your Gatorade. It was pretty much. Yeah. Well, actually, the Natty Light was like the Gatorade because the water oh, content fair enough. and stuff, you know. Because it was. It was like drinking nothing. The Budweiser was like your pre-workout. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's got all the proper amino acids and right. whatnot in it. it. It was my protein bar for my, uh, uh, you know, cap throwing, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> got to refuel, you know. You got to have to refuel. Yeah. Hi, baby. Hi. So, so yeah. um, I got a few more things about today. Okay. Then we can get into the rest of our nonsense. Okay. 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 So today, uh, it was the first day this week that I've had to deliver to a college campus since school's been back in session. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Now, what seems to be all the rage this year, which, I mean, I'm not complaining. Fanny packs? But, no. <laughs> not complaining, but it, you feel like a fucking creep. Right. <laughs> is as I, as, I, as I coined them, the slut jorts. Oh, Okay. Because there are these jean shorts that the, they, their whole, like, asshole hangs out, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got to say, for the asshole to hang out, those are some, you know what I'm saying. Those are some really weirdly shaped shorts. I'm, I'm like, what, what? where are all these students going? A lowrider photo shoot? <laughs> it's like, what is going on here? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tony's driving a van that says lowrider on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> It's just, it's fascinating to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that time of year, though, for another, you know, probably a couple of weeks or so, so. I mean, it looks like, you know, someone came by and just, like, impacted the jeans into their vagina yeah, with a polo mallet. Yeah, you're not wrong. I, I can't get over how short the short shorts got. Cause they're, they're fucking short. They're really I saw yeah. I saw lots of bottom butt cheek today. <laughs> right, and you're not just talking about your mirror self uh, stuff. Well, no, no, of course not. Yeah. Tell That's me full. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what was I thinking? That's right. You pull them down like it's the copper tone thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oopsie. <laughs> yeah. It's an oopsie moment. Yeah. Let me show some In the cleavage. middle of campus, I get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Wah, wah. Oh, Uncle Molesto. <laughs> so so I, I had that, and then I had, you know, I've talked about the Jeep Wrangler wave before on the show. Yeah. I'm driving home. I'm sitting. To, I'm just waiting to turn out onto the main road, and a guy in a jeep goes by. And he's like, with his hand up in the air. I'm like, hey, and I wave, whatever. Yeah. So he's going the same way I am, and I'm. I always because I don't. I, his windows are down, and I've had so many people talk to me in traffic. Yeah. You know, and I just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So we're, we're going up a pretty major road. I'm trying to pass him, and he matches my pace. Oh, Jesus. And I just I have to look over, and, I, and all I hear is, ah, Jeep, ah, 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 woo! he drives away. <laughs> Was he white girl wasted? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what he's He had, like, two teeth. <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. He was pointing and yelling and then wooed, and all I heard was Jeep. 
Uh, so I went, okay, see you, buddy. And I, I probably turned up the wrong road. I was trying to get away from it. <laughs> you just turned into a ditch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Through some yards. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a Jeep thing, you know? <laughs> it's just, oh, my God. I love I love driving the Jeep, but somebody, I didn't know I joined a social club. <laughs> yeah, you certainly did. You know? Yeah, because, yeah. Riding with you, I've seen people, like, they, like, go out of their way, too. It's not even, sometimes it's not even just, like, a head tilt or something like that. It's almost like you're one of those uh, wacky, you know, inflatable waving arm guys sometimes. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <"Woo!" exactly. laughs> It's like, yeah, we get it. We get, you got to cheat, I, I, dude. I generally just do the old, like, two fingers off the top of the steering wheel. Right. While I'm still driving, like. A middle one on each yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. The stone cold wing, wrangler wave. Right. <laughs> wrangler wave. There Can't you go. talk. It's fine. You had it. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just sometimes blown away by <laughs> That would be awesome. Nonsense. Like, from now on, if instead of waving to people, you just flip them off. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? It has to be double handed, though, because, you know. He's got to do it right. Right. Like the rattlesnake. Well, it's true. They'll never see it coming and stuff. No, that's... It's an RKO. Well, or a diamond cutter. Or a diamond cutter, yeah. Or a sniper shot. It's probably true. Yeah. I, I've heard. Ugh. You heard? Uh, yeah, you heard. So, I mean, other than that, it's been, you know, fairly uneventful. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Uh, let's see. What do I got here? Oh, I, I forgot to mention uh, that the Pick'em League we talked about last week. Oh, yes. I, I set it up. It's I, it's set to private. I didn't. I was thinking about setting it to public, and I was like, eh, we can have all these just randos joining it. I'd rather have it be people that want Well, it's, it's an exclusive invite-only club. Right. So if you are listening and you would like to be part of it, hit us up on Twitter or email us at saltylanguage at gmail.com, and I will uh, forward you an invitation. It's a pick 'em league against the spread, and I, that's about all you really need to know. It's you get a point if you're right, and you don't get a point if you're wrong. It's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, I like it. And you know, maybe we'll Tony and I will put our heads together and see if we can come up with some sort of wacky prize for someone you know that wins. Unless it's I us. like it. We'll we'll film a uh, foot fetish video for him. <laughs> Not of our feet, though. <laughs> just, oh, yeah, I didn't want that. Jesus. <laughs> It'll look like, like Jurassic Park. <laughs> you just yeah. put Chris Pratt in between our feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa. Easy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I had forgotten about that. I wanted to make sure we get that business I know, out of I the way. I know Big Dev's in. Oh, yeah, maybe. Should we talk about that? There's controversy over the challenge that you and I laid at their feet at on their show. Really? You haven't caught this yet, eh? I have not caught well, I'm kind it, of behind on everything. Okay, so. so you know how the challenge was they had to do 100 of three different exercises? Yes. You know, within the week or whatever? Well, yeah. Dev did his 100 push-ups, but he did them like knees on the floor push-ups. Whoa, I'm sorry. Not to he not ca- to sound like the 50s, but you mean girl push-ups? <laughs> he called them alternative push-ups. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, Travis is, you know calling shenanigans and saying that, you know, uh, Dev should lose, you know, based on that he wasn't playing within the the rules. And you know what it reminds me of is, you know how sometimes in life, it games or different stuff, you're not cheating, but the spirit of what you're doing is not within the rules kind of a thing. Like right. your intent is to cheat, essentially. I th- it reminds me of our pal Butter. And Butter, if you're listening, I love you, but you know I'm right here. <laughs> you know, that kid played as close to the line of cheating as possible when playing Magic the Gathering. Yes. You know, kind of a thing. And it was always like, I get what you're saying, dude, but it's like, the spirit, though, it's like you were trying to circumvent the rules, and I don't know about that. I don't know. What do you think? It sounds like shenanigans yeah, to me. Yeah. Now, I did tell him that regardless of what people say, because they have a uh, survey up, uh, you know, that you can oh. answer in. And uh, I told him that, you know, regardless, uh, his punishment will be the the eternal scorn of the Salty Language program because... Indeed. Yeah. Well, did I did I tell <laughs> you he'll be at Detroit Beer Fest? Yes. So we can scorn the shit out of him. That we should make him a scorn hat. <laughs> I, I've already given him a frowning of a lifetime because... Wow, yeah. that's harsh. Right. 
Well, yeah. I mean, our punishment was supposed to be the walk of shame, so or the shame walk, you know. So it's, I mean, even though it was slightly modified as to not terrify everyone, but, you know, to have things waggling in the breeze. Well, you know, uh, I think a proper punishment would be, remember the game Seven Minutes in Heaven? I don't like where this is going. <laughs> seven Minutes in Heaven with Molesto Delicioso. <laughs> oh, oh, because see, his name is Dev. And Devin, I thought you were going to go somewhere darker with that. <laughs> Seven minutes in Devin. <laughs> if Travis had cheated, that would have been the punishment. Uh, <laughs> For who? Although, I will tell you this. He should have a bit on their show called Seven Minutes in Devin. <laughs> I agree. That, that's a freebie for you, Dev. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're always looking out, uh, you know, giving bits to other shows. So, it's, Well, this is very true. <laughs> It's true. I've, how many times have we been like, ooh, this show should, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Although it was, it he said that uh, when Travis did his sit-ups, he did crunches instead of sit-ups. But, I, see, I don't have as much of a, I don't know. Is is that better or worse? 100 crunches versus 100 sit-ups. I think sit-ups are rougher than a crunch. I think so, too, because I can't do sit-ups. <laughs> 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 I can do crunches. I just can't do setups real well. So, yeah, I'm kind of so. If if we have shenanigans afoot from everyone, this is almost as equal as the old Black Sox scandal. I know, I know. I, I'm almost thinking we put an asterisk by the whole thing. It's gee, what a if they cheated wow. on this challenge. What other challenges have they cheated on? There you go. Because remember, they told us it was all in the honor system. Well, if shenanigans are afoot, then I'm not sure anything can be trusted. I'm starting to think I know what the next punishment might be. All right. Because they're quickly becoming the Pete Rose of <laughs> the Fat Fuck Olympics. <laughs> Forever. They might need to have Pete Rose haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to go with, you know, being banished from the Fat Fuck Olympics, but. I'm thinking Pete Rose haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Rose haircuts are way worse. <laughs> <laughs> Now, hold on. Pete Rose haircut now or like 90, 80s, 90s? Pete like when Rose he had haircut. that hair helmet. Okay. <laughs> that's. What, I just wanted to make sure. Because yeah. now he kind of rocks like a flat toppy, you know. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about classic Pete Rose hair helmet here, dude. I, I agree. I'm with yeah. you. And I honestly feel like you and I should be the ones to render judgment on this as we laid the challenge. This is true. We should be the governing body of all things. Yeah. So, Agreed. I don't know. It's going to look like the... Uh... <laughs> Like the three wise people in Bill and Ted's, but it's us. Right. <laughs> With sweet glasses and a flat top. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I really want to see a picture of Devin Travis with Pete Rose haircuts. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so let's move on from that. Cause All right, fair enough. I just We had to address it because we were kind of involved. So. Yeah. Well, let's see. I got the Pick'em League on her. her. I've got stuff, but I have it written down in terrible order here. Um, yeah, all right. Terrible, huh? Yeah. Uh, did you see they uh, revealed the uh, first images of, uh, well, not first images, but first images of uh, Earthface and Cassidy? No, I have not seen that. Yeah, they actually have on set pictures of them. I had a link, and I don't know where it went, so <laughs> you may have to look that up oh. yourself to see it. Sorry. I was about ready to, but Google Chrome just crashed. <laughs> awesome. Well, that won't help anyway. I was like, actually, I just found it. However, <laughs> if it crashed on you, that doesn't really help. Yeah, well, we can still talk about it. I'll True. look at it later, I guess. Yeah. So uh, there's a link, handy link for you if you'd like it. Um, Ooh, once my browser comes back, I will check that out. <laughs> yeah, you can't see Ars face real well, but it, it looks like they did a pretty good job on him. And the guy as uh, Cassidy, I think, looks pretty, pretty on point. So, pretty spot on, eh? Yeah, obviously, you know, I, I want to see, I want to see Jesse. Well, yeah, you the know. body. No. Ventura. No. No. Mm -mm. But he's got like sweet delts and stuff. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> I will have none of your shenanigans, sir. That's a lie. <laughs> You're right. Um. Wow, this is just. Just. I, I can't wait until I can take this laptop out to my yard office space style yeah well i was just thinking just put a hot piss across it <laughs> possibly throw it in the fire pit all right fair enough 
<laughs> I guess that's a another uh, another way of doing things. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll I'll drink a ton of coffee, make it extra vile. <laughs> You're gonna keister some extra cups. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so... Oh, I, yeah, okay, all right. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, I think a pretty, yeah. pretty decent uh, decent look on both of them. Because Ur's face was one that I figured they were going to not show for a while. I figured that right. they would kind of keep him under wraps, you know, like keep some uh, shorty, uh, shorty shorts. That makeup look looks, looks like it sucks to wear. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, for those who aren't aware, we're talking. it's from the Preacher TV show. Just yeah. check out our website. There will be pictures. Yeah. See, all I do believe space. it's called saltylanguage.com. Of course it is. But they already knew that. It's their homepage. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right? Right? <laughs> it is, isn't it? If it is. Do you want to see your family again? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Things got really dark there. Man. Um, so, I mean, hey. So, yeah, that was about that. Um, I was reading earlier today, I'm bleeding cool, that uh, DC Comics is uh, – uh, apparently they've got to cut costs uh, somewhere around $2 million. That's a lot of costs. Yeah, so they're talking like there's going to be more ads in their books. They're going to cancel, you know, unsuccessful titles. And they just launched this, like, DCU uh, program where they were trying to um, take more chances with books, like kind of do quirky takes on different books and whatever. Right. And they guaranteed 12 issues of each of these series to give them a good – you know, a good chance at least. And they've now rescinded that. So where they That's could cancel bad, the books. I like dumb shit like that. Yeah, I do too. And I kind of wonder what books will be on the chopping block with that. Cause I could see, unless there's a big name attached to it, maybe some books disappearing that are really good. And I, I hope some don't, but you know, hmm. what can you do? I wonder, I mean, yeah, is it cause, uh, it's because our movie franchises have been sucking dick lately. You know, it's funny actually, I'm bleeding cool. One of the other stories on the site, uh, that was that somebody's theory is that their their movies have done have haven't driven any traffic to the comics, right? It's like you know Marvel. I mean, look at them. Yeah, exactly. You know, right? And you know, it says DC's recovery plan will uh, see them double down efforts on selling trade paperbacks and uh, you know the Dark Knight three. They just they finally announced the the first book comes out I think in November or December of this year. Which, man, you talk about a series that on one hand I'm kind of excited about, but on the other hand I'm really terrified of. Right. Because remember how bad Dark Knight 2 was? Ugh. I don't know. You if know you what? Know. I never read oh, it. Oh, well, did uh, Well, I guess maybe if you end up reading the third one, you'd have to read the second one. But, you know. Says uh, who? <laughs> eh, fair enough. It was not good. No? All right. No. I'll take that I'll take that in mind. But also, I'm not like, braining. I'll keep that in mind. That's fair. They're saying that page rates are probably going to come down for books and stuff. But DC, I guess, has been uh, one of the – like they pay more than most places, so they're probably just going to come closer to you know industry standards. But that still sucks for anybody who does work for DC because you know, p- taking a pay yeah. cut is always a good time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So Yay, and, pay cuts. And like they mentioned at the bottom, DC has not mentioned this, but they the our author of the column put, and then there's the price of co- the comic books to bear in mind. After all, they have over two million defined, and it's like that's yeah, all. That is a lot of money. It is, and the thing is, I don't know how much you can raise books though. You got to be real careful because there's a lot of people that five dollars is really. I mean, they're they're inching toward it, and they're doing it a lot more now. With five uh, bucks, you know, hell, that Batman Eternal, that weekly series, was four bucks a book for fifty-two weeks. You know, I mean, that's crazy. Now, do you, you know, think maybe the mistake came with like with the Batman movies when they tried to make them realistic and dark, when like Marvel's clearly comic booky and fun? You know, I don't know. I, I think you for know? Batman, that's what so many people told him they wanted. Well, and, and I, I would like, I, I, yeah. there shouldn't be fun, campy. Do you know? I think here's Batman. the thing. I think Batman should be dark, but I don't. It should be. I don't think Superman needs to be dark. Superman should be fun-ish. You know what I'm saying? Like I yeah. think it's a like Justice League doesn't need to be a dark book. It can be just like Avengers. It can be bright and fun and you know also serious at the same time. You know that's. But they could do I, I think I'd kind of want to see like the Batman movie is dark. Yeah. But I kind of would like to see him go against his more comic booky foe like Clayface. Yeah. 
for it just to throw one out that's not you can't do realistically. Yeah, that's true. That would have to be all CG. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, like the whole angle they had there was like, well, the, all these guys could actually, this right. shit could happen yeah. in real life. That's what we're going for. Yeah. When I kind of, like her Poison Ivy, you know, when right. she's got her plant shit going on. <laughs> right. You know, I agree. Got, it's not going to be some botanist. It's like, oh, well, you just wandered into my grove of plants that are plants. <laughs> plants that are plants. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, Unless, you know, I, she's got Audrey too in there. I'll tell you who I'd love to see. Honestly, I'd love to see a Batman movie with the whole Hush concept or yeah. or Red Hood because right. those could be awesome movies. And uh, you know, and the character development and stuff would be fantastic. You know, and for people who aren't familiar with the story, you have a nice twist, you know, uh character-wise in there as to who Hush is and who the Red Hood is, you know, whatever. You can right. have some fun with it. And I read something the other day that the Red Hood might be getting, <laughs> to use the old wrestling term, a push this oh. this year. Like that they're they're wanting to make him more important and that, that may lead to something down the road, which I think would be sweet because I, I think it's a, a, good, a ba- good Batman story. And that's what I'd, I think I'd kind of like to see him do. It's like they do with the animated stuff. I think that's why those are so good is right. you're taking source material that's strong and you do that, that's where, like, Marvel's not making their animated stuff. They didn't take it right from comic stories for the most part. They tried to do, like, an all-new whatever. Yeah, their own thing. Whereas Marvel's just putting movies up, but the movies are influenced by various storylines through the comics, you know? Yes. And, you know, the Batman ones kind of were, but really, like the Dark Knight, uh, what is it, the second one? Was it Dark Knight Returns? No, um, or not Richard, Dark Knight Rises. Whatever the Dark second Knight. one was, the with the Joker that you yeah, know, that one. Yeah, so you know, but I don't know. We'll see. I they're saying that uh, the editorial department has already told creators. Uh, the, the The headline says, "Stop Batgirling and go back to meat and potatoes." And Batgirl, like they turned the character by making her a little more quirky and fun and different. And that worked really well, but it doesn't work for every character kind of a thing. Right. Like, I can see that. You know, right now, Batman is Commissioner Gordon going around in a uh, mechanical bat suit, and they've got Bruce Wayne with no recollection of being Batman. And uh, it's an interesting story. I don't want to give it away because if people are, haven't read it yet, you know, it, it's an interesting read. I it, When I first read it, I kind of didn't like it, but it's kind of grown on me what they're right. doing with Bruce Wayne. Um, I put enough faith in Snyder that he's been a really good storyteller, but, um, and like Superman right now, he doesn't have his powers. He's got limited powers and he's huh. go- going around in like a t-shirt and jeans. And they were like, yeah, that'll probably be switched back pretty quick. Like, all right, enough of this. Let's get him back in the suit and flying yeah. around and beating up everything. So yeah, it sounds like, uh. Sounds like DC is going to have a little bit of a uh, an interesting positioning, and the thing is though, it's like they don't even have a movie on the horizon anytime really soon, because there's Suicide Squad, but I can't remember when that comes out, and uh, Batman vs Superman doesn't come out till what late next year, I think. Right. I mean, they're forever away, you know. So unlike well, Marvel, guess, I mean, they got their TV series. It it's seems true. To be doing doing yeah. fine. Yeah. And, yeah. I am curious how much the TV series are sending people into shops. Like Flash, um, I could see people. Yeah, I could see because, Jesus, fucking cold cat nose on the back of my knee. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> yeah, the Flash is it's very accurate to the comic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it's, I don't know, I, it, it might very well be driving yeah. people in there. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am very curious about it. But, you know, it. but you're right. They do have those two shows. They've got the spinoff of... Those of what is it? Those two shows. I forgot what it's called. You know, with like the villains, and uh, it's going to have Adam and whatnot in it. Yeah. You know, and then they've got Supergirl coming out, which I personally think looks like a train wreck from watching that pilot. But you know, who knows? Um, oh, see, I haven't watched the pilot. The trailer I thought was all right, but yeah. the pilot's kind of a shit show. Uh, it's just it, it's got so much in it that I hated so much. Right. There were a lot of people that seem. Uh, optimistic about it and I was like listen I understand like from the trailers I understand being optimistic 
But when you can actually get a look at a full episode, ooh, you know. Oof, huh? Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah, just, you <laughs> know, they refer to Superman as him. Like, it's almost like they treat Superman like he's a god, you know, kind of a thing. And it's like, it's him. They never say Superman. They just say him or he. or And it's like, why wouldn't you just say Superman? She's talking to Jimmy Olsen, and he goes, he wanted you to have this and he, when he gives her, uh, like, a cape or something. Do they ever officially say Superman? Not that I remember, no. Maybe they don't have the rights to it. Maybe that's what that it is. is. And that's so stupid, you know, that yeah. they can't just say Superman if that's the case. But I don't know. I could go into a long rant on that, but eh. Uh, don't uh, let me go off on a rant yeah, here, bub. I, instead, it's like, you know, go go watch it. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's – I don't know if it's up, like, legally. I – Watched it on, I forgot, one of the, like, pop culture sites had it, so I watched it through their site, but... Yeah, why not? Eh, whatever. It is... Yeah. What it is. But on to good comic book news... Oh, okay. Black Mass Studios, who we've talked about back in the past in the show, um, mainly because I've been like, hey, go read We Can Never Go Home, because it's a really good series. Right. Um, Anyway, uh, they're now on Comixology and Kindle. And nice. they weren't for a while, and their books, because they're a smaller press thing, their books would sell out, like, super fast. And they finally, you know, they would put they put um, digital books up on their site, but they were kind of slow to get you the codes for them and stuff. As, you know, as much as I love their books, they kind of had an issue, you know, with that. But now right. you can get them through Comixology. Like, We Can Never Come Home, or We Can Never Go Home number four came out this week, and it's already up on Comixology. You know, like, bang, you can get it. Or you can order real copies from uh, uh, Black Man Studios' website. Um, but it, it's cool because now people can get a taste of some of these books that sold out really fast because they're small print runs. Right, right. Uh, like, Young Terrorist came out last week, and the number one issue, it sold out, like, right away. And Space Riders and various other books that they that are pretty strong books, but they... You know, they, they sell out because it's a small press company, you know. Mm-hmm. So For sure. Yeah. And then on the tail of that also, it was announced yesterday that We Can Never Go Home is going to become a, an ongoing, not just the five-issue miniseries as as it is. So people will have a chance to jump back on board when that one actually comes out. So, you know, if you're not reading it, the trade will be out because the fourth issue came out this month. The fifth issue should be next month or the month after. So the trade will probably be pretty soon after that. Right. Of one through five, you know. So, uh, you know, that's that's strong. Big, you know, love seeing good stuff like that, you know. People getting Well, it's, it's good when the quality stuff, especially when small press, yeah, gets that, bigger and bigger. Right. It, it, that it wasn't like they didn't start off with Black Mask and have to leave and go to Image or somebody to get, you know, that size, distri- you know, the distribution, excuse me, right. that they need or whatever. So that's cool. Happy for them. So, and let's see, I think that's all, yeah, that was about all the comic stuff I had. I just noticed those uh, last couple days. and well, That's all That's all pretty slick, yeah. if I say so myself. Right. So, you got any stuff and things, or? Not really. I, say, I, mean, I, I got, I got I was more, a, I just. I, I pulled that article for the, uh, you know, all the shitty words getting added to the dictionary just because, uh, you know, <laughs> who was supposed to record with us tonight. I thought she might enjoy that. Right, right. Well, I can, we could save that for later, whatever, or next time. Oh, whatever. Or we can just cover it. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Let's go ahead. What the hell? I mean, I've got a bunch of stuff, but whatever doesn't matter to me either. Here, let me open it because since all my shit crashed, I have to re- reopen a tab. Well, while you're doing that real quick, have you seen um, the uh, YouTube video of the guy explaining how he thinks that Daniel is the bully throughout Karate Kid? No, but that sounds awesome. Because he says basically through the whole thing, Daniel instigates all the fights. It's a really interesting video. I'll, I, I was gonna say I, I have a link if you want it, or I'm sure you can pull it up real quick and easy. I'm, I'm gonna add it to my notes, so I'll put it on the website. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I watched it the other night. It's pretty interesting. I, you should definitely watch it. I forgot how long it is. It's you know, but it's just kind Daniel of Daniel is the bully, right? Yeah, just kind of funny how uh, you know flipping the script a little bit on. Uh, the story there. Yeah, that is that is something. I kinda like that idea. Yeah. I can see it too. It's been a long time since I watched Karate Kid. Right? But it's, yeah, you think about it a little bit and you go, you know, yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So alright, so uh what words were added? 
Uh, well, they don't have the whole thing. So it was like oh. a thousand words. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That were added. But it's such classics, Brian, mm-hmm. as Awesome Sauce, Hangry, I wish and awesome Beer sauce O'Clock. Would, I wish Beer O'Clock and Awesome Sauce would go away. Cause I butt hate, Dial, also. Okay, see, I can live with Butt Dial. Um, but it's not a word. It's no, I will do most of this shit's not really a word. I anymore, know, but, I know. Yeah. But like the blank o'clock, whether it's beer, whiskey, fornicating, whatever it is, o'clock, I hate it because it reminds me of gate. You know, everything is blank gate. I hate right. it because the reason it was Watergate is because that was a hotel. It wasn't about water and a gate. Gate was not the conspiracy. Watergate was where the cons- you know it the- was the hotel. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> yeah, it's just like being an alcoholic when people oh I'm a chocoholic. It's like there's no chocohol that doesn't work. Like it can't exist on its own. Right. So it can't be a word. Like that's where I have issues with it. Awesome sauce. Just I just always hated it. That's just a personal deal. Man, obviously they like so they don't give the the full uh, list here. I heard kayfabe uh, made it too. Heard what? Kayfabe. You know, from uh, oh, from, from wrestling, like wrestling right. yeah, which is uh, when you break character and such, like you know, so which is kind of um, funny that that's taken that long to make it. That term's been around forever. Oh well, here's here's a small. Oh god, my nose is like it's going to explode for a second. That's nah, fine. Ah, Just here's a small one. list. All right, uh, awesome sauce, bants, beer clock, bra, brain fart. I'm going to sneeze. What the hell? <laughs> Cupcakery. Fat shame, hangry, MX. What is uh, MX? Does it uh, title it's... used before a person's surname or full name, but those who, by those who wish to avoid specifying their gender. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Why can't we? Oh, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I just oh, you know, whatever. I mean, I guess we'll, we might as well just throw it out there. We're supposed to have former third Mike Tate recording with us tonight. Mm-hmm. And she was always the classic grammar Nazi, as we would call her, which, or called herself, or I don't know. Which was always funny, because she was always abbreviating words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I thought, I saw this, and I was like, oh, I should pull this for this yeah. week, because this would be entertaining to see how she reacts. Oh, I'm with you on it, though. It's like, I always hate reading those lists, because there's most of the words that are on those lists, I'm like... Ugh. Yeah, like good, some of good. Ugh. Some of them make sense, because they... They have actually become, you know. Words. Yeah, sometimes they are things that describe something better than anything else does. Yeah. You know, like, I. that's why I don't have a problem with butt dial, even though it's stupid, is because really it's, how else do you describe that? That's really what it is. I just want to know who still butt dials with smartphones. There's that, because most of them have some sort of a lock on them. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, last I checked, I didn't put the, I didn't use my ass print <laughs> for my little fingerprint oh, reader you, here. Oh, you didn't? I, uh, no. That was actually how I chose to do it. I actually used my left testicle. Ah, smart. <laughs> Not smart. the right. <laughs> you probably shouldn't tell anybody. Now someone could kill you and take your testicle and unlock your phone. <laughs> they don't know where on the testicle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the whole thing's like one big thumbprint, so it's, you know. Yeah, exactly. Good nice. luck figuring out where. Uh, just picture somebody out there now trying to use their taint as the thumb <laughs> yes. the... Every taint's like a snowflake. <laughs> the fleshy fun bridge. The grundle, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? What we got? Oh, yeah. I, I, I got nothing else. You want to jump into the, the Q of the W's? And, the Q of the dubs? And I, I have some uh, shut up and take my monies, whichever you want to do first. Well, I only have a couple of Q of the dubs, unless you got some more, too. Uh, and no. your thing. I think I have mostly what you have. Well, we have work creep stories we have to do real quick, too. We have so, those, too. Let's do I, those. I got... I got Q to dubs about the games from Heno and from Jared. That's what I have. Oh, okay. Well, maybe let's get that out of the way because, yeah, that one wasn't uh, wasn't a resounding uh, hit, I guess. Yeah, I thought it would been awesome. I guess not. Yeah, people. Now, one of them, one of these answers, I do have issue with, which okay. we'll get to. Fair enough. But uh, Heno says the arcade version of RBI Baseball with two screens. Yep. Had classic player names and abilities, just like the city names for the teams, and gameplay was still "quote unquote" arcade, not yeah. too realistic. You'd earn or lose points if you had to throw in an hour quarter. My buddy Brendan and I would taunt each other the whole time. Drain! 
<laughs> good times for hours on end. Uh, good and call. Then, uh, I FRJ that. Yeah. from the Ridiculous Ramblings podcast mm-hmm, mm-hmm. put on here, or I think they just call it Ridiculous Cast now. I can't remember. No, that's her, that's her Twitter, Ridiculous Cast. Yeah. Still Ridiculous Ramblings. Right. Uh, Jared put, GoldenEye for Nintendo 64. My buddy and I played for hours and more fun than any game I've played before or since. That's the one I have a problem with, Jared, because it's a first-person shooter, my friend. Granted, it was an amazing first-person shooter. Yeah, but there's plenty of first-person shooters out there. Yeah, I'm with you. The only and and I I agree though that like there was no other game really that was ever truly the same. But Perfect Dark was really close. Real close. The multiplayer part. Now, if you're talking the single player part, uh, that's a little different because right. you know it was a lot different because it especially at the time because you had to like sneak around and you know be a spy basically you couldn't just run and gun but you know i mean don't get me wrong i made hours and hours of sweet sweet love to golden eye <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean i understand yeah i i actually think i i i made more hours of love to uh perfect dark than i did golden eye I liked Goldeneye, but I loved Perfect Dark. Yeah, oh well, yeah. I mean, I have Perfect Dark on my Xbox. Right. It's like I banged Goldeneye on the side, but you know, my my main right. bitch was was uh, Dark uh, Perfect Dark. <laughs> God, For sure. I just blanked. I'm like, nerp, nerp, nerp. All right, like so I see you over there, James Bond, but I'm really looking at Joanna Dark. <laughs> right. Hey, girl. Hey. Wink. Uh, we had one more, which was from our buddy uh, Douge Lingerie. Um. Who can now be heard on the Inglorious, was it Inglorious Gentleman? I forgot already. <laughs> Something like that. I'm terrible. Uh, podcast. Uh, and his answer was uh, Tube Sock Sports 93, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure was a game only he played. Probably. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Be Probably f- still plays. Be fouling his socks. <laughs> it's like one of those little Tiger Electronic games, but a crusty sock. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> to go back to the Evan Dorkin thing, do you think he ever found a pattern in it? <laughs> 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 and he was done with it. He's like, it's the same result every time. I'm done. Yeah, it's crazy. Probably. But he likes the result, so it's good. True. Yeah. Yeah. He's a savage. Indeed. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's all I got for those. You got anything else for? Well, we do have to post our current Q to W, which is an easy one. Because our Q to W, Brian, mm-hmm. you got to think hard about this one. Okay, is our challenge to our listening audience is to present us with future Q to Ws. Yeah, we because uh... <laughs> sometimes the well the well runs dry sometimes. Yeah, or we just forget, <laughs> <laughs> which is what happened this week. I actually I've been meaning to uh, like tr- kind of look around online and try to find some questions or try to come up with some, and I just have not done it. So. Really yeah, I was easy. putting the notes together right when you, I saw the little salty languages online, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't have one for this week. <laughs> oh, well, we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah. The Q of the W is taking a week off. Yeah, pretty much. Eh, what can you do? All right, uh, we kept doubling down of Q of the W's and this and creep stories and so. Right. I mean, unless, you know, like your creepy, you know. The creepy name thing is our Q of the W, which is pretty weak Q of the W. So Also very weak. Yeah. <sighs> Not feeling that one, but we still need a creepy name, though. So. Right. Just saying. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's see. Ugh. What else do we have here? Uh, I guess well, we just have, well, we have shut up and take my money and work creep stories. Let's do work creep is, stories. Now, should, should, do we need music for it? Because I've been, we got... <laughs> Maybe not. No, no, I don't think we need it. <laughs> okay. Not to mention that's not creepy enough. Yeah, I don't really have anything else. It needs to be like a creepy clown music or something in the background. I mean, you know? I'm looking. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, yeah, I really got, I mean. More seductive than sex. These probably won't be, but. Yeah. Mm. Ah, well, whatever. I guess we got. What could I write? <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Okay, so what do we got for uh, work creep stories? You, ha- I actually think you have all, almost all of them. Unless, unless you got some emails. Oh, I don't have any oh, emails. My, my fault. I do have one email because you've got the voicemail and the one from Beegs, right? Yes, I okay. got a voicemail. I got 
the Beagles. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I don't have a work creep story here. I actually have a uh, uh, game from oh, breaking uh, news. Breaking news from uh, Cheeto Bandito. Um, the game was Another World for the Sega Genesis. He put the game was long, a side scroller with an art- articulated character, think, think Prince of Persia, and a variety of levels and backgrounds. You had to think your way through levels, sneezing and activating things in order to progress. I think I played that game. While I'm a fan of the run and gun gaming, this title held sounds... me in front of the TV for hours and hours at a time. He actually included a link, too. It sounds so familiar. It really does. But I'm nope. looking it up right now. Nope. After looking at the box, it is not a game that looks familiar at all to me. <laughs> Says it oh, was, hell yeah. I played this game. It was also known as Out of This World in North America. So, yeah, this game was cool. I remember this. Okay. I you like not. me? Yeah, that stupid black lying thing that'd kill me all the time. <laughs> yeah, this was a neat game. I don't Good know. call, Cheeto. I was just going to say maybe if I look at some game footage or something, but no. I might have played it, but I don't remember playing it, so... This is one of the ones I would rent all the time because it was. Uh, That's so weird. It, it was very, very simply animated, but it was yeah. so like fluid and cool. Right. It's just you funny. Know? Funny that if you played it a bunch and I don't remember it at all because we used to play games together all the day. This is time. true. So it's yeah. just weird that uh, it could just be my shitty memory. That's very likely. <laughs> it, fair enough. Yeah. Well, I see. It was. It says it was on PC too. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I played it on Sega, though, but I guess there's a chance I might have played it like one of my cousins' houses. Okay. So. Yeah. Either way. Good pull, though. Cause looking yeah, that at is it, a good one, because yeah. I forgot all about this game, and I kind of want to play it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the only one I have. All right. Well, that was an excellent one. Yeah. I missed that one. But anyway. Yep. So, so I'm I got creep. some word creep story. Or I'm sorry. I got some word creep story. <laughs> <laughs> Gather around, childrens. <laughs> so the first one I have is from my lovely wife over there. My lovely naive wife. <laughs> Who, for three days in a row, this guy would show up, a customer, and he would, would he talk to you, right? I should just have you tell the story because you're right there. But you're not going to come over here and tell it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's coming. All right. So we'll skip to Annalise's real quick. She's coming over here. Fair enough. She sent us over Twitter. Her work creep story used to have, she used to have an older male coworker who always tried to hug her with the bonus back rub combo. Hashtag creepy. It's like, ugh, just trying to get the small of your back. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, it's where all just your seeing if you have those weird hip dimples. Uh. That's where you carry all your tension. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I, I will say what was funny to me about this was Attention. <laughs> was yeah. with that story uh, yeah. came some other comments, uh, you know, about like her resisting a an at work massage, and I believe Nichols said he would hire that guy in a minute. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I maybe something about how you know they don't like team building exercises. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe for the um, um, you know his murder cabin, they'll have uh, you know. A nice creepy Bonus back rubs, right? A nice creepy massage available as well. Exactly. It's, they have totally new frontal hugs with bonus <laughs> back rubs, right? Ugh. Totally nude. <laughs> All right, here's my lovely wife. Oh my Hello. god, that microphone! Sorry. Why are you sorry? <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Okay, well, I'm sorry you handed me a mic. I put it to my mouth. It's what you do. <laughs> so uh, I worked at a cash register. I work, I'm work. i a manager at a, a hobby store. And a gentleman would come in and would visit me and chat with me and did it three days in a row. And on, on the third day, he said that he would see me tomorrow because he was coming to, to look at my smackable ass. And I responded with, well, I won't be here tomorrow. It's my day off. You'll have to come in two days. <laughs> so <laughs> I came home and I was talking to Tony about it, about how nice this guy was. And he's like, no, that guy's a creep. <laughs> and I just I didn't realize that he was hitting on me or being a perv. So that was my creep story that had to be pointed out to me 
that it was a creep story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, love. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely 100% grade A certified yeah, Angus like, Coming cream. back for that smackable ass. <laughs> Yeah, well, he was. Yeah, he was. Uh, Probably spent an extra 10 minutes in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm sure he was smacking something out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, why is my thigh always messy? I know uh, what his hobby was. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Doug mention it? Or, no. <laughs> Tube Sock 93 or whatever that exactly. was. Exactly. It's, uh, it's like Sock Macrame or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning socks into boomerangs. Like, oh, is that Modge Podge? Well. <laughs> I don't know about Modge, but it's certainly Podge. Hey. Hey, hey. Ooh, uh, oh. So I have that one, and then I have our friend Renee, who was telling us just the other day when I was, said earlier we went to breakfast, that her boss took her out on her last day of work to lunch and then proceeded to hit on her and told her how he treats every all his, he, he treats everybody nice. But he treats the people in his special relationships better. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good creep story right there for sure. Yeah. Or no, I'm sorry, I said special, but I have quotes in here as secret relationships. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> secret. Secret. Uh, creep. Creep. I need a, I wish I had a creep sound drop. I hope he's listening. Creep. Creep. <laughs> oh, oh, damn it. I should have had fucking Radiohead ready. <laughs> the creep. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, jeez, dude. We could have we could have tagged every one of these of that. You're right. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, all that's right. why we you know that's why professional shows do homework. Yeah, probably. That's all right. Whatever. Well, it's tough because we always we always think about this stuff, like as we're doing it. So really, the professional shows would go back and put it in in post. Well, that's because we record live, but not live. Right, right, right. Like you could easily do a live show, but then it's all that live work. Yeah, it's true. You know, it is true. Plus, some of the tech I from. Listening to you know uh, BT one hundred and forty, like being in the chat room when that's going on, it's unfortunate at times. Like Skype just craps on you, and and it just dumps your show. Like you can't, yeah, you're bumming. You're just bumming, and you're just hanging out. Your, your dick's hanging in the breeze during that time. You know, you're As just usual. like, uh, <laughs> yeah, true, but <laughs> just but the breeze is extra cold. <laughs> this time, it's more like standing out in front, you know, in a public place rather than you know just in your house or out in your yard. <laughs> Or in the parking lot. So as you- <laughs> <laughs> speaking of creeps, now we got more, right? You got uh, you got more creep stories. Don't I you? got. I just have sound drops now. I don't have any well, spoken ones. That's when I. Well, oh. I was going to say you got you got emails or anything. Or no, 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 no. I, I oh. I'm just waiting on you to play the stuff we have. Are you ready? Yep. First one we got is from Coach Ryan himself from the Green Up two point three seven eight nine er. Right. Dash 11 podcast. That sounds right. Yeah. I'll I think check. that's right. I, I, you can always trust his math. So It's true. Dude, I math with the math of him. <laughs> well, good thing Tate's not here. She'd check that math. She's right. She would. <laughs> then I'd, I'd once again have to go to oopsie face as my, <laughs> as my drawers are falling down. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Just a clever distraction. Yeah, it's not really clever, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, no. All right, so. All right, uh, so this is from Ryan. Hey, Tony and Brian. This is Ryan from the Green Up Gaming Podcast. Uh, I heard your work stories this week, and uh, I got a, a three of them I can share with you. One is about me, one is about a coworker, and one is from my boss. So we'll wow. start with uh, just a rundown where I work. I work at a business very similar to Costco. Uh, difference is we're just focused on uh, food retail business you know, wholesale and everything. You can't buy a pair of jeans or a diamond ring or flat screen TV, but if you want to buy a really nice blender and a number 10 can of tomato sauce, hey, you come here. Nice. So we get all sorts of customers, everything from coffee shop owners to caterers to, you know, anyone that uh, wants to make and serve food. So uh, I my first story is about me. So we had a coffee shop owner, a very nice lady, 
Um, ironically, the second story is linked to her as well by her son. Anyways, uh, I was helping her out one day. She had a pretty big cart of, you know, cups and milk and all this other stuff. So she needed help out. No big deal. So as I'm pulling the cart with me, she was walking next to me and she stopped to get in her purse to unlock the car. Well, as I walked by her to put the cart behind the back of her SUV, um, she turned around and hit her shins on the cart because she wasn't paying attention that I had moved and she started to fall. And Hilarious. my instinct was to reach out and catch her. By so I reached my arms out to catch her and her back was falling to the ground and I caught her. And as I started to uh, lift up so she could get her balance, I realized that both my hands were on her goods. <laughs> and as planned, the level of embarrassment <laughs> that I hit. Uh, I asked if she was okay. She's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. Thanks for catching me. Like, you have strong hands. I quickly loaded everything in the car, thanked her, had a good day. And for the next three weeks, I didn't make eye contact with her. He also didn't wash his hands. (laughs) In case you're wondering, yes, they were real. Oh, excellent. Uh, The second story is uh, about one of her sons who is autistic. And I've told the story on Green Up before where where uh, I made that reference and pretty much embarrassed myself. Uh, The kid's a wonderful kid. He's... uh, (laughs) <laughs> when he comes into the store, he greets everyone because he knows everyone by name because, you know, he remembers everything. And uh, he's very loud, though. Like, he'll come in and be like, hi, Jerry. Hi, Ryan. And he like he, he's yelling at you, even though he's just a foot away. And he always asks, uh, what are you doing? Uh, which is fine. But as he's gotten older, um, I think he just lives with his dad now. Because we don't see his mom anymore, she. I think she ended up selling her shop. Uh, he comes in now. I think he's got to be at least sixteen or seventeen. Uh, a lot of times, he lifts up his t-shirt and <laughs> sticks his finger in his belly button and rubs his stomach. Um, it's progressed to he'll nice come in the store, and all of a sudden, if you just turn around and look where you look and see him, he's literally has his hand on his junk. <laughs> Half the time his hands down his shorts, the other half the time it's not. So uh, us guys at work tend to, once he leaves, we usually laugh and make jokes about it. But anyways, this one day, uh, one of the new guys we had working was uh, inside the deli cooler and uh, me and my friend were working in there. And he walked in and he's like, hey, how's it going? We're like, hey, good, good. And he kept walking closer to us. But the new guy that was on his knees, you know, reaching in to fill stuff from the back. You know, you got to rotate your product. Shit goes out of date. Um, and, he walked and up. And worked the balls. And we asked him, hey, how's it going? He's like, good. He literally, it's just what he does. He lifted up his shirt and started playing with his belly button with one hand. And then <laughs> on the outside of his shorts, grabs his, his junk. And he was standing there. Wow. And uh, my buddy and I, thought if we took a couple steps back maybe he'd take a couple steps forward <laughs> and so we did he took two steps forward we're like hmm he's getting closer to our coworker that's on his knees not realizing what was happening so we took a couple more steps back he got so close that his stomach was literally right next to the guy's cheek wow and for some reason Ground he zero. hadn't noticed it but when he turned to look what was going on he had this He's got to be five foot ten. I'm gonna say maybe one ninety five, with a finger jammed in his belly button, rubbing his stomach while having his other hand on his cock. <laughs> the reaction that he gave was "oh sh," and just flung himself away because he didn't know what was going on. He got freaked out by the big autistic piece. For us. Uh, so the third and final story is one about my boss and uh the restrooms we have at work are just single use there's a man's and a women's uh but it's there's just one room so you open the door you walk through and that's it no i've there's been plenty of times and i say plenty maybe a handful of times i go to oh i get open it handfuls and some idiot forgets to lock it uh almost every single time someone's peeing so you know you just see the back of them and you're just like jesus christ lock the door dude and pull your pants um, up this time my boss went to uh, go use the restroom. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of customers we see on a daily basis, weekly, sometimes two or three times a week. So we see these people all the time. 
So when he told me the story, it was hilarious. So there's a customer that we see at least two times a week, every single week. Um, <laughs> he went to go use the restroom, and he opened up the door, and the sight that he saw just weirded him out. And he said as he opened up the door, he saw this specific customer on all fours, on his knees and his hands, with his pants around his ankle. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and he just turned his head and said, oh, sorry. And I just thought to myself, why the hell would you have your pants around your ankles? And Hammer be on a three-foot frozen breadstick so, in his ass. <laughs> Uh, that was a sight. So every time we see this customer, it's, uh, uh, I've only told one other person at work the story whenever we see him, we both just look and laugh. So wow. I hope that, uh, adds some humor to your life. Uh, thanks again for having such an awesome podcast. Love you guys. Tony Brand, you guys are amazing. Salty Language is uh, got to be one of the top podcasts out there, especially in my little world. Uh, keep up the great work, guys. Ryan out. You know what I love? I love when people call in and start, and they're just right. Like, you yes. know, talking about how great we are. It's true. No. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I, I've come to a decision. <laughs> I need to figure out a different way to play stuff like that in voicemails. Yeah. Because there's so much shit I wanted to throw in, but yeah. not talk over Ryan. Oh, I get you. Yeah. I would have just kept pausing and adding one-liners. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. it's probably harder to do on that end without having like because like i could probably do it pretty easily but i just have to find the right app yeah basically fair enough fair enough yeah, sir. instead of making them soundboard buttons that i can't pause oh yeah i get what you're saying you know? just play the file I, and, yeah 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 i just need to use a different app right because because that void that 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 chunk of audio would have taken us probably 45 minutes to That's get through true. if i had a pausability it's, yeah it's probably for the best actually that we didn't have that you're probably right dude that last story i mean first of all the reason you have your pants around your ankles in the bathroom is for when you're peeing duh you pull your shirt up and you pull your pants down i mean exactly. isn't that how everybody pe- <laughs> like a big boy <laughs> You know, actually, I now that I think about it, I do have another work creep story. This is, was this well, was brought to my attention hold last on, night. Hold on, really yeah. quick, because I, I yes. wanted I, I forgot I wanted to actually say this before we got into them, which was um, this is a topic I don't want to just be a one week thing. If you have, if they happen to you going forward, feel free to send them in hashtag work creep on Twitter and mention us in it. You know that kind of stuff. And we'll keep reading them and going over them because the I ongoing work creep. Stories. I love work creep stories. They're they've right. always been my favorite because they're always so they're just so great because there's you know everybody's got one at least one. Like I told you earlier, we we owned a comic shop and we worked in a comic shop. We should probably have a ton of them just from that alone. Right. So you know anyway. All right. What was your other but, one? Uh, this this was brought to my attention last night by my coworker Michelle. That apparently the men's room in my work, when you're walking up the hallway, there's just mirrors. Yeah. Like so, it's like the hallway, the door leads into the men's room, and there's mirrors because the sinks are on the wall facing it. Yeah. And she says that the amount of guys that open up the door and immediately start unbuckling and pulling their shit out yeah. before they get to the urinal is off the charts because you can just see them in the mirror before the door closes behind them. So that's why she's staring at the mirror, right? <laughs> that's why, Yeah, that's why she sets up camp there in like a tennis yeah. chair. So she's the creep in this story. <laughs> <laughs> Not them because they're like, hey, you know, I'm on my way to the bathroom. I'm just, you know, I got to piss. That, you know? that never occurred to me because I am probably guilty of doing, at least doing the unzip as I'm walking, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, fair enough. So, so there yeah. we go. I'll never look at her the same again. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I have way more respect for her. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so we got a voicemail from Heno, too, calling yep. the Salty Language Action Line. <laughs> nice. If I was a pro, I would have had the number at my fingertips. Four one five eight five seven two five eight nine. Oh, you got that shit wrote down? Son? No, I don't. Top of my head. Because nice. I've memorized it because of the Jenny song. I'm not even going to lie. Oh, beauty. All right, well, here's the head out. All hail the Minister of Space Violence Indeed. and Brian. <laughs> and I, Brian. <laughs> thank you once again for extending the question of the week with the uh, uncomfortable, creepy work stories. So I uh, do uh, building maintenance for condominium complexes. And, of course, 
always had that hope that someday that penthouse fantasy will come true. And uh, <laughs> he'll one get a day, pizza delivered to him, <laughs> extra sausage. Kind of happened, but uh, <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about it. So this owner, she's built like a brick shit house. I mean, she works for Princess Cruises, Swedish, Norwegian. She's just a tugboat. Blonde, tall, boobs, butt, just bam, everything. Oh. A Bri- good brick house. One of those women that just has that, just a negative face. You know, gorgeous, but just always scowling, and 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 that's how she responds to things. Always cynical and that kind of a thing. So not attractive because of that. Doesn't matter how much you know, badankatow is going on <laughs> with the rest of her. So one day she had a problem with some uh, mildew smell downstairs in the basement. We go down there, have like a room down there. And Was that a euphemism? A little, uh, crawl space off the room. And the door for it is, is around like, oh, chest height or so. So I open the door and I shine the flashlight in there. And I'm, I'm looking around to see what I see. And all of a sudden I feel boots and hips and body pressed up against me. And you think, here was my moment, but no. I froze, I shivered in fear, and I simply sat there, shining my light in, going, no, don't see anything in here. Nope, nothing to see here. And she backed away, and I went upstairs, walked out, and washed my hands. And thigh. So, yeah. That's my uncomfortable, creepy story, and i um, sticking to it. See, yep. See, Hanno, that's what they call a two bagger. <laughs> it's a bag over her head and one over yours, just in case hers falls off. Oh, that's so awful. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say this that, folks, as you're listening, now what I'd like you to do is go back to the beginning of Hanno's story and listen to his story, but. Picture the whole thing he's telling you is as though he's exploring her downstairs if you catch my drift. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a much better story that way. That's her playful name for her vagina, her yes. crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, check I, out my crawl space. Now, let me ask you a question. I just had a trim. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you're about to, you know, have have a sex with a, a, a lady, have, have a uh, tender moment, if you will. Yes. And she says, I want Some you... Some fireside to... trees. Right. <laughs> it's of a course. callback. Of course, yeah. I would like you to blank my my crawl space. Does that put you more in the mood? Or do you think of crawl spaces for what they normally are, which is, you know, kind of dank and nasty? And... Dusty spider webs. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a scorpion. That'd be different. Like the Sub Zero or Sub Zero, God damn it! Like the Mortal Kombat character, I fucked that one up. Oh, all over, I'm dude. tired. <laughs> Terrible. Oh man, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Heno had a chance to to be a guy who could write to the penthouse letters column, and yep. he 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 skipped his opportunity. Instead, little Heno <laughs> ran for the hills. Now, here's my other thing. He's telling us yeah. about how she's built like a brick shit house, and she's Norwegian and all that. Most of them dames tend to be really tall, right? Yeah, death by snoo snoo. Like I'm pretty short, you know. Well, I mean, I'm five eight ish, so I don't know how tall Heno is, but it's like, you know, if she's that tall. I mean, her face would be above eye level, so who cares? Well, yeah, it's true. Like but a I lot mean, of them, no I just one wants to have right sex of an Easter Island statue. Whatever, that's what anal's for. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Fair enough. I kid, I kid. Mostly. Uh yeah, yeah. Good times. So that that's all we have for the work creep stories for for now, isn't it? Yeah, it's good ones though. I'm disappointed. There's some good ones. I wanted to, and I, I agree. I I mean, if we don't get them every week, whatever. Right. But maybe we could compile them. I was actually you know, like, thinking that, so we don't just have yeah. one occasionally. We have two or three to play at a time, you know, because yeah. then you can do your little sound drop, and then we can play work creep stories. Right. And by maybe by then you'll figure out a way to stop them so we can. Oh, I, I, trust me, I'm going to be on that I shit. understand. Priority one. <laughs> yeah, because there's so many things I wanted to throw into both those stories. Yeah. And I, I just can't. If I stop it, we have to start it over again. Oh, you know? yeah, that's no bueno for sure. Yeah. Very no bueno, if you will, as another yes. callback. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, again, uh, if you have work creep stories, send them in to us. Hashtag work creep. 
or uh, just uh, you know send them to our Twitter or our uh, email, or you know call them, call into the the Salty Language Action Line four one five. Eight five seven two five eight nine. Fucking action line. <laughs> that's what it is now. It's just uh, you. You named it. That's what it is. It, Fair enough. I like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we need to put that on the graphic of the van, maybe. Um, <laughs> Make it look like a news van. <laughs> I could. It wouldn't be that yeah. difficult. Make it. I'd have to do some work. Make it look like an old news van. Since it's. Right. I mean, anyone who's seen the unicorn van on our website knows. You know. Yes. It's it's pretty beat up. All right, so uh, yeah, thanks to everybody who sent those in. That was a good time. I like that I was said, a lot of fun. I, I used to love people telling me those stories. So yeah, I actually was thinking that maybe I'll solicit like various other people and try to get stories too. All right, for good. That's a great idea. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot too. All right, uh, so let's see. What do I have here? Uh, I actually, uh, you know, we haven't done one of these in a long time. You got a sound drop handy there for me, sir? I'm talking about shut up and take my money. I certainly am, and you know, before we get into the shut up and take my monies I have for the week, you know, I I got some of the Funko Pops that are from uh, Futurama, and I wish they would do a like a convention exclusive fry with the money in his hand, like a yeah, shut up and, take, shut my up and money. take my money pop. Ah, oh, that how great would that be too? That it it's a you know a, an object to buy with shut up and take my money. Kind yeah, of that thing. Would, it actually makes. Way more sense, yeah, doesn't than it? anything I've heard in a long time. Yeah, well, the convention exclusive this year was the robot devil with a fiddle, which I really, that's really, pretty strong really too. Want. It was that and Gold Bender, which oh, was nice, awesome because you know Gold Bender, <laughs> kiss my glorious golden ass. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm I'm really hoping that they do a fry. I'd love to see a fry with the shut up and take my money, but I'm not holding my breath. Anyway, so speaking I- of holding breaths. Did you hear that story from Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Because remember, he talked about uh, handfuls later. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta say before before we get into show, today, I just gotta say one thing. I am impressed by his grip strength. So he could stop a falling woman by grabbing titty. Yeah, yeah. And she didn't really fall. He shoved her. He like hit her in the back <laughs> of the legs with that cart so she'd fall. Yeah. <laughs> huh? well, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Tweak, tweak, tweak. Right. <laughs> hey, back, I'm, back I'm not to, gonna uh, lie. I, I've huh? caught, I have caught a falling lady that i worked with at a video store that way once not both hands it was more i just put my arm around her to catch her because i was kind of to her side and i saw her fall and i just went to do it and just full on just handful so you'll have that i didn't apologize no i'm kidding <laughs> anyway back to shut up and take my money right uh i actually have two and uh the first one is one that uh we both kind of saw on the instagrams uh what was it earlier today i think it was or last night from our former enthusiast guest over at Craft Beer Hound. Oh, yeah. Which are, they have uh, pint glasses that are shaped kind of like a beer can, which I think are pretty awesome. And as of this um, recording, they're currently on sale for four ninety five. So it's a dollar off. Shut up and take my money. Yeah. I love them. It's got their logo on one side, and then the other side says beer is our middle name because they're Craft Beer Hound. So it's true. It makes yeah. perfectly logical. So I was like, man, if. If I had the money, I would buy like ten or twelve of them. And those things are—they are really cool. Yeah, uh, and they hold a pint because you asked. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I saw, I, I saw it. I was like, "Holy shit!" If that yeah. holds a pint, I think I'm in. I didn't think they would hold a pint because they don't look like they would. But yeah, you know, they're pretty. They're pretty awesome. So, and uh, number two is it was announced that Iron Giant is returning to theaters. Not a redo. Not a none of that shenanigans. The actual movie from like forty years ago. No, it was released in 99. That's um, cool. They're putting it back out in the theaters, and they also announced a Blu-ray is coming out. Nice. Which I'm... Shut, 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 shut up and take my money. <laughs> which I'm totally geeked about, because I don't own the movie somehow, even though I love the movie. It's one of my favorite animated movies, directed by Brad Bird of The Incredibles fame, mm-hmm. um, and voiced by... Voiced by... Vin, Groot. Yep, Vin Diesel. I forgot his name. <laughs> yeah, it'll it's going to return to the theaters uh, on September 30th with new scenes. Also, oh wow! Uh, they don't have a date for the Blu-ray yet, but they've it, it was announced. Uh, it's gonna. I was looking to see if they have anything else, but yeah, they don't. Uh, was it Blu-ray release come the fall or something like that? It says, but I don't know if that's. I, I, they'll probably put it in the theaters first and then 
probably a couple months or a month after that, they'll probably release it on Blu-ray, I would think. Right. That might be something to definitely buy. Oh, I have it on DVD, but... Just, there's no chance I won't get this, because I already don't own it, and I'm, I've am i kicked myself for not buying it very times. to get it on Blue. He needed the money. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Blue Ray? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that'll go nicely with my... Because, again, you know... I, I have one of the Funko Pops of the Iron Giant because as soon as I saw it, I was like, "There's no way I'm not leaving with this." So, yeah, fair enough. Unfortunately, I had no money, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I kid. I kid. That is definitely a. Shut up and take my money. Oh, for sure. I knew that would make both of us happy. Is we're both yeah. big fans of that movie, so. Exactly. And everybody should like. Every time someone's like, "I've never seen it," I'm like, "How have you never seen this?" And I'm like, "Where would you see it? It's like never on TV." You know, unless it's, it's unless it's on like Cartoon Network or something, I just don't ever notice it. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I believe that is all I have, sir. Um, that's all I got too, man. Double checking my list. Oh, actually, I have one one bit of news to announce. Oh, all right. Uh, for those listening, uh, this is going to drop on Monday, the what thirty first? Yeah, it's going to drop on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you about wow. nuked my that ears. Was way, that was way oh, louder than I thought it was. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> I might I might have to put a warning up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Poor Garrett. <laughs> He's not going to be able to hear a damn thing after this episode. Um, <laughs> so much louder than I was expecting. We're gonna have to send him a braille transcription Ooh. of the show to, so he knows what happened after. I'm all misty eyed now. <laughs> <laughs> wow! All right, on September the first, um, I'm going to be on the Beyond the 140 program, uh, and they do a live show, so you can go jump into the chat room. You can log into the chat room uh, with your Twitter or uh, Facebook account, so you don't have to create a new account or anything. Right. Uh, if you want to come make fun of me in the chat room, uh, you're more than welcome to. It's uh, It starts late, though. It starts at 11 at night, um, and it runs, I can't remember if it's two hours or an hour and a half, something like that. Um, but they'll ask me a bunch of uh, shenanigan-type questions, and should be a good time. If not, they'll re- they release the podcast usually within a couple of days of the recording. So, oh, right on. That's way, where I'll have to catch it. Yeah, I figured so. I'll, I'll have uh, unless I'm randomly away. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> just jump on in. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, you know, just like the other uh, thing with the Jedi Council. Uh, as soon as I get a link for it, I'll spread it all over, just oh, all yeah. over you guys, just oh, wherever yeah. you want it. Chest, not in the hair. I understand, but more seductive than sex. That's the hope. I'm, I'm planning <laughs> on going on there and big timing them. That's my no. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. Do you, do you want the soundboard so you can annihilate everybody's eardrums oh, with some dude. DJ horns? Oh, that'd be horrible. Why I'll, was I'll, that so loud? I'll just have. I'll just. Have, I'll just get a real one and just right into the microphone. I'll just blow it. I know it. it's normally loud, but that was really. Loud. Oh, that was obscene. Because normally it doesn't bother me too much until like if I listen to the show again. Because I tend to turn our volume up, and now I'm kind of... I usually do that just in case, and now I'm afraid to. I may kill someone if I do. Be scanners. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just be blood-soaked. Yeah, right? <laughs> blood-soaked uh, earbuds with, like, hair matted in them and stuff. Nice. That sounds erotic. Right? All righty. So, with that said, you know, as always, check out saltylanguage.com. For all the links to things, there'll be the videos and stuff we talked about this week and whatever. Uh, like I said, if you want to email us in anything, you know, saltylanguage at gmail.com. The voicemail, 415-857-2589. Uh, um, <laughs> nice. Um, <clears throat> Salty, me. I got your number. <laughs> I'm still waiting on Neil. I'm going to keep saying this until, we, damn it, he gets this. You know, maybe what I need to do is offer him a swap. Maybe I, I need to sit down and graphic design up a uh, Daft Pod instead of Daft Punk thing for him and oh, offer right. a switch, uh, kind of like a hostage negotiation. That's uh, true. Uh, yeah, so uh, the best way to reach us generally is on the Twitter at Salty underscore language. You can find me at Stunami. I'm at Monotony, although I don't really tweet much. Right. But if you tweet at me, I will talk to you. Right. 
Or go check Tony out on the uh, Instagram so you can see his pictures from uh, Dark Horse. I am the Mono Tony there. Right. right. <laughs> Uh, also, while you're on SaltyLanguage.com, there's a link to a Patreon page if you'd like to become a subscriber. That way and help the show out. You know, you can do a dollar a month or, you know, $10 million a month, whatever you want to throw at us. That's <laughs> awesome. If you can't, we understand. We're poor bastards, too. Um, and uh, also, or, you know, if you're going to buy anything through uh, Amazon, go to SaltyLanguage.com first. Click the Amazon banner and then shop your little heart out. Oh, adorable. Aww, adorbs. Uh, let's see. Anything else? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, make sure you check out the enthusiast episodes. You know, I like, you know, the Evan Dorkin one. I know it's a long one, but it was a good fun talk. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. Beer fest. All that are good stuff. Yeah. There's a oh, lot of really good ones networks, on. networks, networks, networks. Thank you. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I keep turning it down. It's still loud. <laughs> we are part Every of the- time I turn it down a few notches, it's still loud. Yeah, it was really loud. I know. Like I said, I'm afraid. To, I'm afraid to turn the volume up on this show now. Maybe I'll just put a warning. It's like warning. This show may be really loud. <laughs> this is what's happening in people's ears. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just a mess now. Uh, let's see. What was I going to say? Uh, oh, the networks were part of Danger Entertainment, Wicked Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to bed. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm like punch drunk over here. Oh, man. Uh, Musings <laughs> of a Geek, Pod Gods Network. Um, what the hell? Am I? No, I always forget one. Damn it. So we're part of five, I think, aren't we? Um, what did I miss? Uh, Tangent Bound? That's the one. Jeez. Boom. Tangent Bound. You know, I, I celebrate okay. Tangent Bound with this. <laughs> <laughs> At least that one didn't destroy anyone, probably. Well, because I think I finally got the level back where it's supposed okay. to be. All right. I had to turn up a skosh. Yeah. For everything else, and that's why I need a different app for it. Oh, I'm you know right. what it is? That's what happened, I think, was you turned it up because of uh, Ryan's voicemail. And the Heno thing. Right. I probably never turned and it back down. you probably down. never turned it back down, and then you just destroyed No one's listening because they can't. <laughs> it's true. Well, once that buzzing in your ears is over, tune back in. Right, right. It's like when a grenade goes, and you hear it. <laughs> you know. T- tinnitus. Yeah. Make a little Archer reference there. Exactly. All right. That's all we got. So uh, I guess with that, have a beer. You will be fine. Uh, Stay salty. And uh, enjoy your time with uh, Uncle Molesto. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net. Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Welcome to the Wicked Radio Network. You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends. Susan, open the door. Oh my god, what happens now? He's gonna break down the door and she's gonna hide. I'm breaking down the door. Don't you hide. Oh god, what now? He's gonna find her hiding in the bathroom. I know you're in the bathroom. (laughs) I just wanna talk, honey. He's lying. He has a knife behind his back. Oh yeah? Why do you have a knife behind your back? How did you know? That loud mouth in the audio said so. <laughs> well, it's not what you think. He's gonna tell her it's to cut the cable because she wants to be on the Tangent Down Live Show. November 15th, 6 p.m. It's gonna be awesome. You wanna have your own free podcast on the network. Now they'll make up and do the nasty. Oh, honey, let's make up and do the nasty. Wow, what happens now? Now we're getting out of the theater and everybody else will beat the shit out of us in the parking lot. TangentDownNetwork.com <laughs>